albatross around the neck. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Heart of Horror. Uh, I am Bo, I'm one of your hosts. Uh, but we all know why you're here, and it's not me. We have, as always, the the delightful, the devious, the decadent, the the uh, the the Demeter less, to my London. Yeah, I I went. I don't know. I was looking for a D word, and I don't know I how I came up for, with yeah. Demeter. Do you know what? That's so funny because, like, I think it. I don't know if that's. A, like I am just reading um, a book series uh, that's based on uh, Greek mythology. It's like a, a modern retelling, and it's full of smut. Um, but mm. like, um, I think it's like it just reminded me when it said Demeter, like Demeter Persephone's mother. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like she's like a villain in it and stuff. So it just reminded me of that because I'm reading those books right now. Well, not right now. I'm recording with you right now, but when I'm reading, so it's what yeah. I'm reading. I have been. Yeah, it's funny that. <laughs> I've not been reading anything so high-minded. I read <laughs> high-minded as what well, Greek <laughs> Greek mythology with lots of sex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it always had a lot of sex. It always does. Yeah. In fairness, it's just being true to the original source material. Right. I mean, if you want to get graphic with the sex, that like, you're just making a decision that, like, I all of those stories, like uh, Zeus was always fucking. Zeus is always fucking yeah. This these stories focus around Persephone and Hades. Oh sure, yeah, that's a good story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. real good in this entire. <laughs> Stolen away to the the underworld. The underworld, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I know that's what I'm cool. doing later. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I've, I've been reading. Uh, I I finished up that Stephen King, Mister Mercedes trilogy. Oh, over the I summer. enjoyed that. Yeah. Those were quite good. I thought End of Watch, I thought they were, <laughs> I thought the first was the best. Yeah, I agree. So, I've, you oh, know, I found it, not, this isn't really a spoiler, but like, I found, I really enjoyed him doing something grounded in realism, and it kind of annoyed me where it ended up. Yes, I agree. I was I, like, nah, stick to your guns, bro, like, come on. Which, uh, so ironically, so I finished that up, and then I read cellist of sarajevo which was great uh which is more literary and i highly recommend that to anybody and then i read still life with woodpecker okay which is a tom robbins book also great uh Mm -hmm. very silly but i really like it (laughs) and then i started reading fairy tale by stephen king oh i have that but i haven't started it yet oh my god kate let me tell you something okay let me me just get real with you for a second okay i'm i'm nestling in all right so it's great i'm it's about 600 pages i'm about 200 in right there is this fucking dog in this book and uh, slight spoilers for fairy tale if you haven't read it and again i haven't finished it so i can't spoil anything too great but right so (laughs) there's this uh dog mentioned early on named radar right that is an old dog that's like having hip problems not getting around so good but this dog is <laughs> it's a dog like stephen king and dog it, it's it's not quite that bad where like he suddenly becomes a character although he does mention cujo and it always yeah, he slightly... cannot fucking help himself can he? he cannot fucking help himself but i also sort of understand it because like cujo did penetrate the culture in a way let's say penetrate we'll get to it there's a lot of penetration coming up <laughs> and like grinding um but yep <laughs> but i like i'll give him cujo and the shining <laughs> is another one where it's like okay well everybody kind of knows what the shining is yeah uh and everybody kind of knows what cujo is mm-hmm. but this dog has become such a like a character that like even as i'm reading this book 200 pages in a third of the way into the book and there are scenes with this dog like having trouble getting up the steps and i'm almost crying kate yeah because i'm just like because i look at my old dog i'm like one of these days my old dog's gonna be in this place so i i think i threw this in the discord i was like i swear to god if stephen king kills this fucking dog 
like this when you said there's a dog i was like oh god no what what is it it, what fucking is it? Like, I can't... Right. Like, I'm having flashbacks to Wolf from The Talisman, one of my all-time favorite <laughs> literary oh, characters. No, oh. and And just the death of that character just ripped my heart out. You yeah. know, spoilers from a 40-year-old book. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> if yeah. You, you haven't gotten around The Talisman yet, then that's your own fu- fucking fault. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then the book kind of takes this turn where it seems to be sort of about turning back the clock on this dog so that it can live <gasps> and i'm like god damn it stephen king you got me i am so invested oh, in this book he <laughs> motherfucker he's gonna rip your fucking heart out you know he is he's... <laughs> fuck you stephen like my besties you know <laughs> like fuck you stephen it, I, but I, it's great i love it the writing of it is i mean it's it's very late Stephen King where it's still very tangential and he does his own thing but he's just such a master of his art at this point that, yeah I feel like he's he's earned it right like I'm 200 pages in and it feels like I blinked when I started it and now I'm you know like yeah. I'm, I'm already thinking like I might just that might just be what I do tonight yeah is is get another 50 pages under under the belt yeah um but it's it's terrific fairy tale is terrific ever and and it's not straight up horror mm-hmm. but and it reminds reminds me a whole lot of the of the talisman as a matter of fact so oh really yeah. oh cool okay that's definitely bumping up my to be read so it's it it's quite good it's it's that sort of you know character from the real world sort of dipping his oh. toe into a world that is more fantastic we love and, to see it we love that trope we yeah love it. And, and and with this dog with this adorable dog that he's like if i if i take the dog to this other world then it can have a oh, new lease on life can we just not a dog but definitely the same vein can we just have a moment for oi from the dark tower oh sure yeah 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 oh. yeah fuck you fuck you steven I, it's but it's yeah i mean he's got a long and rich history of creating these wonderful pet characters yeah. that just get destroyed yeah and and the reader along with these characters like you said oi from the dark tower it took me a second then i was like oh right fucking oi of course yeah. um oh my Sorry, god spoilers for the dark tower <laughs> uh, that, that, that still came out about 20 years ago that, that book so yeah right i mean again if you're if you've been sleeping on these books that are 20 and 30 years old, like <laughs> I just can't help you. Like the dark tower, his like fucking Lord of the Rings of his, his books kind of thing. Like for sure. I, you know what? My favorite of that series though, was the, the weird offshoot wolves of the Kala. I love Wolf. That's it's, my favorite. It is the far and away. It's the best just because it's such a, a great like origin. It's so heartbreaking. It's kind of a weird like Western romance almost. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like all the other, not, not just only to like his stuff, but other works, like other literary works. Yeah. It's so cool. And it's just, it's a nerd's dream. Yes. You know, just like all the little Easter eggs, all of the little like nods and references and stuff. And you're like, oh, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know like it was i was gonna say wolves of, wolves of the color is my favorite and i also love shit shit what wizard and glass wizard and glass is really good drawing of yeah. the three is probably my second favorite the second book in the series i think is terrific when they all come together and it's got the uh i think that's the blame the monorail or is that wizard and glass no that's no blame the monorail is wolves of color i'm pretty sure oh you're right because it cuts between that and the origin yeah, 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 Wolves of the Kala is so good. So fucking good, right? Oh. I might just read Wolves of the Kala again. Just on its own, maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, but it yeah, it has a, a bit of a bit of Dark Tower, a bit of the Talisman. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm in. I'm yeah, so fucking in. It's quite good. And nice. uh the the other one that I I want to go back and reread because I loved it so much and I haven't read it in a while is uh Bag of Bones oh i haven't read that in fucking i think i've only read it once as well i haven't and, read it in fucking ages but that was with the the guy and his wife right uh he's like a widower and moves into the yeah. house that 
is haunted. Does he, like, see his wife or something? something. Well, yeah, it becomes this, like, ghost story, but also yeah. he has this wonderful relationship with this woman who lives on the island. And Right, that's right, yeah. And What's his name? Because it's driving me nuts. It's, like, because of an L or something, isn't it? Uh, I, will have to, I will have to double check Sorry, this. No, it's don't worry about it. It's no, fine. no, no, I got this. Didn't uh, they make it into a film or something, in, like, not too long ago? I There was a mini series, I think. Yeah, I didn't but, see it, did you? I, like, no, I started it, and it, it's one of those Mick Garris things where I'm like, you know what? Oh, Pierce Brosnan and Melissa George. I should check this out. It's okay. Mike Noonan. Yes. Fucking hell. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, it, Beth Gish. It's what's a that? Good cast. Annabeth Gish in it is in it as well. Oh yeah. Plays the dead wife. So I'm. Uh, nice. uh, yeah, I, I Bag of Bones is another one that felt, even though it's got ghosts and stuff in it, it's much more of a. Uh, a character study yeah it is of of this yeah. mike noonan character than it is uh it's been a long time since i've read it but i want to go back and, and check that one out stephen king I wanna, don't I wanna know if you've heard stephen of him king. everyone oh yeah i mean this kind of real niche sort of <laughs> cult <laughs> indie author but uh but after that <laughs> there's a book i'm gonna read called uh the taste of a man oh um no not that kind uh it is <laughs> not the love and spoonful kind it's uh about a woman my understanding at least is it's about a woman who has such an obsess an obsessive love with a guy that when he tries to leave she basically stops him and then starts to eat him a piece at a time Ooh, that sounds oh shit why don't I, this is what happens with my brain i start saying a sentence before i know how i'm gonna end it uh -huh. um and now i can't remember the fucking author's name but it sounds very much like the... fuck me what is that fucking author it's like a, this queer author who does really extreme books about like Clive Barker. cannibalism and stuff is it oh no, no jc penny's a fucking shop it's like one of those initial names which is why i can't fucking remember it someone fucking help me out here one of the listeners <laughs> it's like they do like they do like really extreme books about like cannibalism but like there's this like book that's set in new orleans and like um like and there's this whole kind of like like cannibalism but like very kind of lgbtq based sort of but underground kind of bdsm extreme like erotica but like with cannibalism and stuff hmm. and obsession and things it's added kind of along those lines I don't know Doesn't the. Help, I, I feel like I know the author you're talking about, and I don't know the author you're talking about. I can't. Yeah, I know it. if I heard the name, I'd know it, but I can't. So yeah, if anyone knows what I'm on about, help me out here because that's going to drive me nuts. So uh, the taste <laughs> of a man. I start a sentence and I don't fucking know how to finish it. <laughs> Sorry. It is uh, written by Slavinka Drakulik. Ooh. Um, who I think is a, a Polish author. Um and yeah, uh, the uh, Jose and Teresa have no common language. They are exiled from their cultures, and for each of them, the body of the other becomes everything: spirituality, sustenance, almost unbearable pleasure. Ooh. In the tradition of fatal attraction, Slavinka Drakulik has written a breathtakingly erotic, profoundly intelligent tale of love based on pure appetite. Ooh, that sounds very enticing. I've I've heard it's quite good. Mm. what's that called again uh the taste of a man oh yeah that's right taste of a man yeah nice so nice, nice so that's been the literary hour <laughs> but which is good i like I, it, it this summer i've been working a bunch and one of the few things that i've, I've sort of rekindled a, a love affair with uh over this time is when i've come home and been kind of tired i've just kick back in bed with the dog who is also getting older and it breaks my heart when i'm reading this book i we've gone yeah. through that i just i look at my dog and i'm like I'm, I, I'm going down that road with poor johnson where i see the snow starting to, to form around his muzzle and i'm like oh when that dog goes anyway but uh so i'll come home and i'll kick back in bed and watch like an episode of justified <laughs> and then start uh <laughs> start reading and i hadn't been regularly reading uh especially in school because i just i i just had so much going on i just did, I, ironically did not have a whole lot of time to read even as an english teacher and um so i've been reading a bunch more over the summer and it's like 
just been the world to me of, of being able to kind of settle back in and like enjoy that kind of quietude mm. and uh and and enjoy like the, the a well turned phrase and um I was going through I told you I read um Still Life with Woodpecker yeah which has a line in it that's one of my favorite lines I ever read and I forgot that it was in that book which was uh, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Aww. And it was a, a line that stuck with me for years and years. I totally forgot. I had it in the wrong book. I thought it was yeah. in a different book. Uh, um, so when I came across, it, I was like, son of a <laughs> bitch. Uh, that also has a wonderful section about how do you make love stay? And um, one of, <laughs> one of the ways is uh, to tell love to uh, wait for you in bed and go get it uh cheesecake from this very particular deli in new york and if you if you come back and love is still in bed waiting for the cheesecake then it will stay um it's a, a very silly sweet <laughs> book and i highly highly recommend tom robbins still left with woodpecker but again <laughs> enough of that nonsense let's get to yeah. other nonsense um so we have a tradition here on this show delayed as it has been of kicking things off with a look at at love especially love that has has somehow managed to outlive the the love yeah. uh in uh a, a section we call ghosted and you have been hard at work <laughs> assembling stories of love and death and people who are dead who are in love and people who are in love yeah. with dead people. <laughs> and I could not be more excited to hear yeah. more about Yeah, so this. apparently there's an actual name for it. It's called, well, obviously there's a name for everything, but it's called spectrophilia. Um, mm -hmm. Which makes sense, to be fair. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. And honestly, being single again, yeah. Yeah. I'm open. Well, I mean, where I live, there if is, there... it's not a dating pool. It's a, it, I, I often call it a dating puddle. Because um, uh, yeah. there, is, there is nothing going on here. Um, so, yeah, I'm open. Right. Like, <laughs> look, no, who am this, I right? to rule out? Yeah. Like, look, it's going to be tougher to have things in common with someone who died in the Civil War. That's yeah. fair. But I'm open to it. Like, let's yeah, give it I a shot. History. Right. yeah yeah i was almost a history minor i'll yeah, start with right, that right i attended history class sometimes tell, tell me about the authenticity of the buttons on your dress or <laughs> while i undo them <laughs> <laughs> right wink, wink. um so okay so i have <laughs> actually gone ahead and bought a book called dating the dead by someone mm -hmm. called kelsey graham not to be confused with kelsey grammar mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> which is how i instantly read it <laughs> just now and oh, I was yeah, like, of course right. I, I, like does does he take phone calls on a local yeah, seattle right. station <laughs> um i'm not that i'm aware but you know we can ask him um mm. so i've got lots of, some of these are not just ghosts but they're actually people who marry corpses and mm. such so once i've exhausted all of my paranormal dating stories then i may go into just necro flat out necrophilia um the yeah necromantic <laughs> right <part three. laughs> or, um so okay cool so they always have like funny little subheadings this one's called mm -hmm. who says all sexy ghosts have to look the same look sexy oftentimes means that you look a little bit different than the, the yeah. average person so i'm I'm with you so and and why should that be limited to just right. people why not, why not ghosts, be sexy? you know it's it's kate it's our flaws that make it's us our sexy. perfect imperfections yeah 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 exactly okay. it's it's the little bit of a little bit of cellulite it's a, the the yeah. mole at the corner of the yeah. eye the corner of my ass i don't mm -hmm. have a corner of my it's ass. the Right, it's the <laughs> the toe that inexplicably has no name. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, I draw the line. It freaked me out anyway. <laughs> oh, real quick, have you seen Talk to Me yet? Not yet, not yet. 
as someone who does not like feet, just that's all I'm saying. Oh, not a lot. There's just one. There's oh, there's just one scene. It creeps me out more than anything Uh, else in the film, honestly. All right, I will see that this week because it's great. That's what I keep hearing. So yeah, I've I've got it. I might eh, maybe tomorrow depends on if I get everything right. And also how knackered you might be for having a full full day back at school. I, you know, it, my my day back doesn't start until Thursday. Oh, that's right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Recording. You could say actually. Yeah. Before. Yeah. So, and I'm going to be up okay. early. Not that they're going to start, like you know, playing movies yeah. at 5 a.m. <laughs> for me, but I might catch like a, a 10 a.m. Yeah, nice, showing or nice. something. Yeah, do, go, go watch it. It's good. But yeah. Ooh, feet. Ooh. Right. <laughs> um, I only watched it last night, so it is fresh in my head. Um Cool. In 2010, an anonymous author on Your Ghost Stories told her story about being visited by multiple ghosts in the middle of the night. And while she was unsure about the initial visits, she became used to the overtly physical nature of the visits over time. This is her speaking. Um, After several weeks of waking up feeling aroused, one night I woke up in this condition. However, this time I was somehow aware that what had happened to me was that of a... Wait, hang on was that a spirit presence was somehow involved with me sexually. I was very sexually aroused and and orgasmed. What kind of ghost exactly was visiting her? A pirate ghost? A bedsheet? The ghost of Patrick Swayze from Tu Wong Fu? Not even close. I soon began seeing translucent images of him. He is not a man. He is some greenish lizard dinosaur type creature. He is not, yeah, (laughs) plot twist. He is not mean or scary. All he wants to do is arouse me and play together sexually. It's as if he wants to transfer sexual energy to me. Yep. Yep. Wow. (laughs) All right. So we have taken a hard left turn. Not only are we dating ghosts, we're not even dating Mm -hmm. human ghosts Mm -hmm. anymore. Well, I mean, it depends on whether you believe, like, whether lizard people are real or not, I guess. Oh sure, they're reptilians. Yeah, it's Justin Bieber, and, and this is and... the ghost of a reptilian. Yeah. Hmm. Well, this opens whole, up a, a whole, whole new world whole you never knew existed, worms. right? Right. Well, because then you got to deal with big feet ghosts. <laughs> the plural. <laughs> you know what? I like you, know, like, you could just be the pluralist big footsies. <laughs> big yeah. footsies, sure. <laughs> So you've got Bigfoot to these ghosts showing up alongside reptilian yeah. ghosts. You probably got a couple of chupacabras uh, of in there. Yeah. Uh, maybe a New Jersey devil or two. <laughs> yeah. Some um, fucking shit, what they called. What those fucking, damn it. This is what happens when I've only had like one cup of coffee today. I cannot fucking think of my words. What's the fucking thing? Shit it. Hang on. I, I, I yeah you were fucking on it but in fairness it is not half past 11 p.m for you so hang on that, this i am gonna find out wait 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 this is gonna be worth it i okay. promise all right <laughs> when d goes when d goes oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Them. sure but you could argue that's just the ghost of somebody that tasted human Very flesh true. and then became a wendigo oh, do you know what it's all circling back it's all, all so all but regardless of what cryptids uh have have crossed into the other side (laughs) the thing that blows my mind about this is she's like all right look i never thought i'd be fucking a ghost but then i was like you know what i think i can get down with this as we all can right like we've all seen uh those moments in our lives when perhaps uh we hit a bit of a dry spell and we're interested in getting off in unusual ways. Yep. And and the idea of getting down with the ghostly is not the worst idea you ever heard. Do you want to hear the weirdest thing I've ever masturbated with? <laughs> yes, of course <laughs> I do. I was. <laughs> I was. Um having phone sex with this guy while I was at a hotel and um I didn't have really anything much with me apart from some clothes 
and he he said like he I can't remember exactly what he said but he asked he instructed me to masturbate with something um the <laughs> the tv remote was too wide Mm -hmm. naturally i would hope so jesus well, christ not to make the story gross but i was only 17 at the time um but uh i ended up i ended up masturbating against the bedpost wow was it like a rounded no, knob kind of square. situation what that seems wildly it uncomfortable but um it was like a really good practice for me on how to fake it for future years <laughs> the guy did oh, not mind right. like you, you thought i was having a great time so he was happy <laughs> um but i was just like i couldn't think i don't know why i just didn't tell him i was i had it's not as if he could see me like i don't know why I did, like i felt like i had to i don't know if i was doing method acting <laughs> yeah no i but i've been in that situation you don't really think you know all your brain all your blood somewhere else and it's not in your brain you know like but i literally could have been like oh yeah like i have this thing here i could have said anything and oh yeah this is what i'm doing baby oh you like that you know but no i decided yep square <laughs> square peg round hole. <laughs> <laughs> quite quite literally yeah yeah um <clears throat> but yeah that's probably the weirdest thing i've ever masturbated with and you're lucky you didn't I mean, break your pelvis i'm just lucky i didn't rip anything <laughs> right yeah it, like i don't know what it is because I, yeah, I, I did i was not i, I was not I can... enjoying it for the record it was not pleasant well but uh, to to that point though i have been in situations where i've been having phone sex with somebody who's yeah. out of town and and been victim of the same thing where it's like i should just <laughs> lie you know like i'm you know i'm not really in the mood for this but yeah. they are and i don't want to be that person that like i don't want to come across as being yeah approved. yeah or just like you only have like that amount of time it's not like you've got all night together so it's like seize the moment yeah yeah exactly and it's that too of like hey you know like i care about the yeah. person i'm with and i want her i want to make sure that she's yeah, having a good yeah. time as well and if she's like hey we're gonna have phone sex now then uh, who am i i mean don't be rude to, right uh look i'm as you said yourself yeah, i'm a good I was egg just thinking that. I've and, said it before, i'll say it again you are a good egg mr ransdell and so i was like i'll i'll get down with this <laughs> and you know and she'll be like so are you hard for me and i'm like I guess I'll get there. You know, I'm like, of course I'm telling her, like, of course I am. Are like, you kidding yeah. me? Just the, the very sound of your voice. Um, and meanwhile, I'm like, all right, let's, let's get the pump primed here. Cause apparently this is what we're doing tonight. Do you know what it's just, I just thought of like, I wonder how many sexual encounters where neither people have been into it and they've just been lying to each other. I'm like, yeah, baby, you like that? Yeah, it's so good. And both of you there just flicking through the channels, like <laughs> thinking that the other one's getting on. You know what? That's but very funny to me. but honestly, <laughs> the relationship was better for it. You know, like even even if both of us were not yeah. into it, it's still like you're just still because in a lot of ways, all what what you're doing with phone sex is you're saying like. Yeah, part of it is like getting off and and having that fantasy and so forth but part of it too is just like i this is why i find you attractive and i'm going to tell you all the things about yeah you and it's like i miss you do you know what i mean like i you know yeah. like i i'm it's, here but i'm thinking of you <laughs> oh, it's, sex. it's just a sexy yeah, i miss you it's a sexy yeah. i miss you 100 percent, absolutely yeah that was, that was a fucking weird time <laughs> um but yeah, in all my time, I like the most I ever use like couch cushions I have used. Oh, who hasn't? But that's that's the furniture wise. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll tell you what, the arm of a sofa. Oof. Ooh, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. I have vibrators. I don't know why I <laughs> like it's like i have a perfectly good phallic thing that is designed to give me orgasms what the fuck am i using an animal well, object for? but you gotta mix it up a little bit you can't come to rely on that like you know i for for a while i had a flashlight oh, did you? are they good i bought my yeah, friend yeah, yeah. as a joke years ago and then i got 
I was yeah, on it's holiday, all right. <clears throat> and I saw one, and I bought it back for him as a joke. Guess who got stuck at customs? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And the thing is, it wasn't even that that set it off. It was my fucking battery charger for my camera. I was just like, fuck's <laughs> sake. I was like, that is, <clears throat> that is not uh, for me. <laughs> and, they, and I did it in front of the whole fucking queue of people as well. I was like, excellent. What, what is this, sir? What, what happens if I unscrew yeah. this stop? This doesn't, this over, oversized novelty flashlight <laughs> that you brought me. That is, that is not mine. I have one already. You know, like, I don't need a fake mm-hmm. one. I have the real one. So I'm carrying like one all around the time. all the time. Yeah. You know what? You keep it. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it was okay. But uh, but it's the thing of like, I've got a hand. That's that great. works fine. Have you done the thing where you sit on it? I sit on my what, yeah, what? I, Not specifically, but I've definitely had a situation where i was masturbating with a hand that was yeah that's what i mean yeah and it was mine (laughs) just to be clear (laughs) i wasn't wasn't just finding sleeping hands anyone around (laughs) yeah give us a hand Mm, daryl's asleep (laughs) was it did it make any difference that i I think is sexual assault or is that just a mess um I mean, it no, it doesn't feel like it's like somebody it, else. It's like I know right. what oh, I'm yeah, doing. Sorry, so not just what I but but saying. but it's it's an interesting sensation in that you can't. It it I mean it doesn't feel the same, and so that's uh-huh. unusual. And anything that's new is kind of fun, yeah. at least for a minute. Um, but yeah, it was eh, fine. But I have found uh, as time has gone on that I just don't necessarily need a. Uh, like it uh a lot yeah. of toys there aren't that many for guys you for know that, though, i don't think are there really not not a ton and the ones that i've used have been fine but also you know there's just so much cleanup and yeah that is the annoying thing having to clean up your vibrators it's just it doesn't take long it's just such a fucking pain in the ass right because right when you're done you're done I like you want to be nap. done for with consciousness yeah, for a little while i just want to go and eat or fall asleep or something just like, like yeah i'm not saying that you're immediately just gonna you know knock right out that's bad form but um well, it's fine if you, you know you don't want to well yeah but you don't want a cleaning project no. you know it's like nobody wants to fuck and then mop <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop a load and then go reorganize my No, yeah, cabinets. exactly, hundred percent. No, exactly. Yeah, it's just no. Just give me five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So liz- lizard yeah. ghost sex is a thing. Apparently, we're saying thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm kind of for like. I think it's weird, and I think it's weird that all of a sudden because the other option is that it's the ghost of a dinosaur, <laughs> and that seems weird. <laughs> That just sounds painful in every way. And if you were going to film it, obviously it would be called Jurassic Park. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Tyrannosaurus sex. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, and also as well, he's not mean and scary. Like, he's just kind of cute. He just mm-hmm. wants to make you feel good. Like, v- Vasexoraptor. <laughs> Man, it's working a little too hard for it. I'm, I'm into it, though. Like, hang on, there's got to be one for Triceratops. Like, I, I think it's just Triceratops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tricera Power Top. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I like that. Or, or Triceratops oh, from the bottom. That's my, that's my deal. I always top from the bottom. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so did. How long. How long is this going on? How long is she still? Uh, well, she had, well, Do we know? Is there any ending, follow-up? But she says, well, in 2010, this is when it came mm-hmm. from, um, she had several weeks of like waking up, like aroused, and there was like seemed to be some sort of physical thing going on. And then she realized after several weeks that she that it was some sort of spiritual presence. Um, but it's cool because she came, so all good. Mm-hmm. And that's all we got. Mm-hmm. 
So presumably right, well, she's had 13 years I... of really great lizard sex. <laughs> <laughs> you know lizards not necessarily known for being the most caring no but oh could you imagine the head of, of lovers oh right? sure yeah, oh yeah. oh that's a game changer yeah i'm i'm thumbs up for lizard sex totally yeah, totally down kinda, for him going down yeah mm -hmm. mm, yeah all right I, I was trying to find a cunnilingus pun with kinda dinosaurs kind of lizard? So. Mm -hmm. restriction, restriction. yeah yeah kinda, yeah yeah it's it's yeah, it tough. Uh, I still like Jurassic yeah. Jurassic Park is great. I'm sick of that. Um. <laughs> all right. Well, shall we talk about our <laughs> our, our subject film? at hand yeah. and movie at hand? <laughs> Why not? We've talked about every single fucking other thing. Um. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what people are come for. They're not. They're not here for. They're not here for the like. W what's on the <laughs> sign? It's more the ambiance and the experience. <laughs> it's not. You know, it's like if if you've got a restaurant named like Corky's, right. and it's like I know it sounds stupid, but you go in and it's got the best barbecue you're ever yeah. gonna have in your yeah, life. Yeah, very true. Um, uh, and that's I like to think mm. what our show is. It's the Corky's of podcasts. Yeah, I like that. I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, all right. So we were talking about the movie yep, The Hunger, Corky's. <laughs> 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 which is uh, a, a movie that when I saw it for the first time, I was way too young for it and felt like I had seen something that I was absolutely not yeah. supposed to watch. How old were you? And, oh, I mean, 12. Right. And, and part of me, like it, it's part of it is I don't get this. Right. Mm-hmm. And the other part of it is, this is sexy. Like, everybody in this movie so is sexy as sexy. fuck. So fucking sexy. And uh, directed by yep. Tony Scott, who did... Uh, True Romance is probably my favorite Tony Scott movie, but he Top also Gun did... Man. Yeah, uh, Top Gun and... Um, I... <laughs> uh let's see where he was director of uh let me filter this by director you what you th you think i would have done this earlier <laughs> and then i didn't nothing um, <laughs> right right and just imdb just just the worst out. at this they're point. just complacent at this point aren't they? i mean yeah just worthless. So, uh, The Hunger, Beverly Hills Cop 2, Top Gun, Days of Thunder, The Last Boy Scout, Crimson Tide, uh, Enemy of the State. Shit, was that him? On the platform. Yeah. Spy Game, Man on oh, Fire, oh. <laughs> uh, Taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3, the remake of that where, uh, uh, John Travolta tells somebody to lick his bum. <laughs> what? I haven't seen it. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my that god. Happens. John Travolta will just do anything nowadays, honey. <laughs> I mean that that's 2009. John Travolta when when he was still riding high on that second wave of his career. Was um, he? And then the last. Was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in oh nine. Yeah, I mean that's in the phenomenon range, right? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, all right. Well, let's hold on. Let me jeté over to John Travolta. Let's uh, see what okay, was going go, go, on go, for go, him in, in 09. All right. So there's uh, Wild Hogs, oh, which was crazy popular. Yeah, no, I forgot about that. Taking a pair on one, one two, mm -hmm. three. But that, yeah, this is kind of on the downside because uh, this is... Um, he did face off in like a decade yeah. before and primary colors and civil oh, action and, and then battlefield earth happened What's battlefield earth? the oh battlefield earth is that scientology oh, movie said. <laughs> it's terrible oh my goodness you should watch it if you've never seen it because it's crazy <laughs> bad um and yeah, and then kind of after that was a lot of like Wild Hogs was probably the most popular. Yeah, it was pretty thing mainstream. I never saw it. It looked awful. So yeah, but that was probably the Does last. Yeah, I had one mustache in that. In taking a pill, mm. one, two, three. 
he has a goatee in that in in wild hogs uh maybe um let me see wild hogs he's got no he's got no mustache in that Mm. now but he's got a weird leather hat so ah john travola yeah so but anyway tony scott is who we were talking about (laughs) Tony Scott, uh, like kind of a big time movie director. This is real early on in this his career. This is like his first movie, wasn't it? Yeah, and he's uh, the the his brother's yeah. Ridley Scott, and this was what he had directed prior to this a um, couple of videos. Yeah, wasn't he doing like commercials and like music videos and shit? Like he'd not done anything like full length, you know yeah like it did some tv did a couple Mm. of shorts did a movie called loving memory in 1971 that is that he wrote and directed that uh sounds kind of interesting looks like a bbc kind of production or something and at any rate so he and um uh uh, really scott fun fact sorry my cousin yeah. has just married like the cousin or something of Ridley Scott. Yeah, no shit. I don't really <clears throat> speak to that side of the family, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would be milking it, but I don't, so I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of cool, though, right? That is very cool. I'm I'm curious about <clears throat> uh, it. Like, if that cousin now gets to hang out with Ridley Scott, I would be curious to. I would love to ask Ridley Scott about some of the crazier film decisions yeah. he's made yeah i don't really speak to my cousin so it might be a bit awkward me just turning up and be like oh hey so <clears throat> you friends with ridley I... now can we be friends <laughs> right i need i need you to get me in touch with ridley scott because i have serious <laughs> I demand answers for. <laughs> right like i i want to know why ridley scott uh directed movies like I don't know, Black Rain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like why? Why was why was really Scott all up in Legend? <laughs> what the hell was going on with GI Jane? Yeah. <laughs> and can we have an honest conversation about Hannibal? Oh you know, yeah, like yeah. Mm-hmm. And. What, what was the the um that movie with Russell Crowe? A good oh, year. I saw that. Don't know that one. I mean, nobody oh. did. And you're like, you're Ridley Scott, man. What are you doing directing this like, you know, all store brand I'm movie? Say it very hallmark. It, it like that Robin Hood that nobody saw that nobody yeah, cared that about. He did that. Russell Crowe. Uh. Exodus, Gods and Keys. I, look, I could talk to him for you a day and a half about Jim. Alien Covenant. I don't know, they realized yeah, that, you like, a, listed all of that. I was like, God damn, that's a lot of shit. It, that's <laughs> the thing is Ridley Scott, you never, that's the thing that makes him interesting is half the time the movies he makes are total garbage. <laughs> and then half the time they're the best There's movie one of the others, saw. no in between. Trash or Masterpiece. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, like Matchstick Men totally great movie nobody ever talks about it because nick it's cage, it's right? criminally underseen yeah nicholas I, cage saw that. And, uh, I liked it if i recall mm. yeah it really good him and sam rockwell who yeah. can do no wrong i love sam rockwell yeah oh, i mean so who fun. doesn't there is we had a conversation recently they're like we're in the process of well we're in the process of uh trying to get the 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 movie that i wrote cast oh really and of course the yeah but i mean the strike is yeah putting all of that stuff on pause but but uh sam Sam rockwell's name came up and i was like no fucking shit it's like if i was like you just ask sam rockwell what what he wants to play anything and give him the money he asked for um if he if he is willing to be in the movie i don't i don't care he can he can play any part that's Um, insane Right. I mean, the the odds of Sam Rockwell being in this movie are marginal at best, but it's one of those things like, eh, you, you send it out to everybody and you yeah, say who yeah. says yes. Um, but, Can you imagine uh, that? Yeah, no. It's, uh, right? But uh, the list of people it's going out to is still pretty fucking crazy. Wow. 
there's a, a non-zero chance Clancy Brown might be in it. Wait, and, and I'm like the fucking Highlander. Wait, non, wait is, what does non-zero chance? What does that mean? I can't work out a double negative. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it it means that he is in our price range. <gasps> and might do it. Is it? Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, the, the fucking Ooh, Kurgan could be in a that's movie so I wrote. Fucking cool. It, it, it would be cool. Anyway, we're not here to talk about me. <laughs> nah, I, I saved that for online dating. Um, <laughs> On your profile, by the way. <laughs> that's right. I, you know what? I, I don't advertise that. I, I'm like, Keep it humble. save that Keep for the humble. day. Keep it humble and save it for the date, and and like if that way, if I like her, it's like all right, let me pull yeah. out some big guns. Um, okay, <laughs> but anyway, so Tony Scott directed this real early in his career, written by uh, among others Whitley Strieber, right, okay, the guy who did uh, Wolfen and uh, wrote Communion and apparently experienced Communion, uh, according to him. Uh, what? Yeah, are are you not aware of communion? No. All right, so Whitley Strieber says that he had this alien encounter, which is detailed in a book called okay. Communion. They later made a movie of that book and playing Whitley Strieber in the movie is Christopher. No, Lloyd. is it? <laughs> yes. Amazing. And so it is Christopher Walken playing Whitley Strieber having alien <laughs> encounters. I want to see that film. It's, I mean, it's not a great movie. I don't care. It's Paul Walker. But, it? It's Paul Walker. Paul, wait, fucking Christopher Walken and, uh, and aliens. Yeah. I don't, that's that, enough said. That's all I need. Yeah. Just having him walking around like, come on, it's yeah. an alien. Just, you know, it's, uh, it's so good. Great. So anyway, that's the 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 bona fides of the movie, um, starring Catherine Deneuve. I know, how you? I don't normally go for bombs, um, but she's got a certain je ne sais quoi. See what I did there? It's because yeah. she's French. That was a joke. Uh, <laughs> David Bowie. Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, how do you say it? Bowie. I say Bowie. I say How Bowie. do you say it? David Bowie. David Bowie. Bowie. Oh, it is David Bowie. Shit, now I've said it, it sounds better. David Bowie, David Bowie. Yeah, it's David Bowie. Is it, Duncan has a, a weird way of saying it, too. <laughs> he's Scottish, he can't help it. Don't be mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the accent. Um, but, it, but I've heard it pronounced a couple of different ways, and I'm never entirely sure. But I just, I've always David called Bowie. him David Bowie. It's me trying to do a Scottish accent. David Bowie. 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 Yeah. Bowie. <laughs> That's so fucking stupid. <laughs> We're just sitting there anyway. just going, Bowie. David Bowie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, people are going to switch off long ago. This is you and me, mate. Let's just have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Jamie's still listening. So... She loves a Scottish accent. All right. God bless you, Jamie. Um, so it's. It, Catherine, <laughs> Catherine Deneuve, David Bowie, and Susan Sarandon are your three mm. main leads. That's quite a lot. Um, weirdly, Dan Hedaya shows up in this for a hot second as a detective that nobody yeah, cares about. Yeah, and then he turns up in an even quicker second. Dude, Fucking Willem, Willem Dafoe! Because I'd never seen this film. And I yeah. was like, I'm sorry. I rewound Dafoe. it. I was like, is that fuck? And then I had to look up on IMDb because I still didn't but like he was he was kicking about though in 83 wasn't he like he's, yeah he's it, i don't get it and on it all right so the the other guy with him at the phone booth is an actor named john pankow who has been in everything from uh w was really big on the show mad about you as Good cousin watches. ira um but was in to live and die in la um Oh my god! I mean, he's just been in in everything, like every Pisces TV show. Uh, oh, it's that guy. <laughs> it was in was in talk radio. Was in Monkey Shines. 
um, was in The Secret of My Success, was in First Blood Part it's 2. It's just because you're American was, and this is all shit that is in America and not here. Yeah, right. The, it, actually, I don't think any of the things I mentioned were shown yeah, outside. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but he was in Elementary. Okay, that rings a bell. The, was that the Sherlock thing? Uh, yeah, I never yeah. watched it, but I, I know of it. He was on the show oh, Lucifer. Oh, it's been on my watch list forever. Let's watch that. And was on, uh, what else? Uh, the Good Wife and the Good Wife was it? Oh no! And, oh, I watched. Stuff. I watched. Yeah, no, I did watch the Good Wife. What's that spinoff they had? Oh, the Good yeah, Fight. I never watched that, but I did watch the Good Wife. I like the Good yeah. Wife. But yeah, I mean, like, j- just has been around forever. But in- anyway, it's interesting that like he played this bit part opposite yeah. Willem Dafoe. But like, they're just because they, we'll forget to talk about it later. They're just these two guys hanging out, waiting to use a, a public yeah. phone. And Dafoe is like, "Hey, lady, yeah. get off the phone, Dafoe." <laughs> and. <laughs> My Willem Dafoe impression involves me saying the name Dafoe a bunch. It's not great. It's, it's my favorite. Oh, no. Uh, no, my favorite is... Um, <laughs> shit, what's the fucking voice you do with Duncan all the time that I love? What's the fucking... You t- oh, Hellraiser. Fucking Doug Bradley. Oh, yeah. The, Duncan is more the the Hellraiser you impression. Do. Oh, you, no, you do fucking Damien. That's who I love. Hello, father. I, I Well, and I do a lot of yeah, Damien. Yeah, and Lynch. David Lynch. But you do a lot of hello, father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, father. <laughs> I'm afraid it's time for me to send you to hell tonight. Literally, uh, I've had so many people stare at me because I've just been cry laughing at a bus stop listening to you and Bo do fucking uh, do, you and Duncan do fucking impressions. <laughs> I recently I was I was listening to uh, some Conan O'Brien stuff and he introduced a new one into my vocabulary. Yeah. Same voice. But it's instead of father, it's using pater. <laughs> Hello, pater. <laughs> this, this soup is unsatisfactory, pater. <laughs> Clean it from my plate, please. With your tongue. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> and so, yeah, the Defoe is just using... It, it's like uh, if he's doing the Green Goblin, it's a lot of like, I'll get you, Spider-Man, Defoe. <laughs> It's a self-promoting for no good reason, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's in this for a hot <laughs> second. Like literally, <laughs> like truly a blink and you'll miss yeah, it performance. Because you only see his face for maybe, maybe three, eight, like, eight seconds really of actual nothing. screen. That's why I had to buy wine because I just like, it was one of those things where, like, you know, your brain catches up. You know, you can like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. Wait, hang on, the fuck? Did I just see? <laughs> The foe, the fuck did I see? Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had to rewind it back. I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, is that? and then I went and looked at IMDb. I was like, "Fuck me, it is." Um, yeah, it's fucking bizarre. Like, it's so weird. Um, and then it's because it's mostly just his voice over the top of other things. You know, it's just right. like, oh, it's another junkie. It <laughs> it did inspire me to go watch uh, about the first half of Mississippi Burning now. One with him and uh it's him and and oh, gene nice. hackman um and a terrific movie uh about uh a civil a murder during the civil rights era in mississippi oh okay and he's he's a young fbi agent sent to investigate the disappearance of some civil rights workers some freedom writers they were called in a mississippi town and it's like him and gene hackman and uh francis mcdormand and um oh uh 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 oh geez hold on i gotta <laughs> now i gotta look up another actor because I'm, I'm having a brain <laughs> fart as well it's uh 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 chucky bread oh shit i saw it. him recently in a criminal minds episode oh, yeah wow. he played a sadistic horrible fucking killer because of course um and it was so stupid of me because I was like I was half asleep watching it and I'm, <laughs> I'm watching I'm just like who's that guy god he looks really fucking familiar <laughs> just like and I looked up I was like dickhead 
It's like only yeah. one of the more recognizable faces. <laughs> like, how the fuck do you think he looks like anyone but fucking Brad Dorf? <laughs> it uh it's him, Hackman, Defoe, Francis McDormand, Brad Dorf, Stephen Tobolowski, who is always a treat when he mm. shows up in a movie. Uh Michael oh, Rooker nice. is in nice. it. Alan Parker directed it. Very it's terrific. Movie. And what's it called again? Mississippi Mississippi, Mississippi Burning. Burning. All right, cool. I'll, I'll check that yeah. out also. And it's Gene Hackman, also uh, one of my all-time favorite actors. And he's one of the other, he's the uh, the partner, Willem yeah. Dafoe's partner, who's you know, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Yeah, kind of, and is also from Mississippi and is like, you know, they do things a little different down here. You need to understand Dafoe's just like, I'm here to uphold the law, Dafoe. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> and Hackman uh, has this great scene where he tells a story about his father killing the mule of a black farmer oh, nearby when he was a kid. Still screaming. And Defoe, yeah. And Defoe asks him, "Like, is that supposed to teach me some kind of lesson, Gene Hackman?" <laughs> Defoe. And Hackman's <laughs> Hackman has this great line where he says, "No, that's just a story about my daddy." And it's a great, like, Gene Hackman <laughs> moment of him having that kind of all shucks yeah. delivery. And uh, terrific movie, though. If you've never seen Mississippi yeah, Burning, I, watch I Mississippi Burning. It out. It's uh, yeah. wonderful. If I can find it um, <laughs> anyway, enough for him to fell love because he's only in this yeah. for two seconds. Um, Is this the sexiest Susan Sarandon has um, been? Yes, in because I never could believe that she was really that sexy. She's just so far from my type. Like I know that that's probably going to shock people because I know people do have a bit of a have a bit of a a fetish for her or a bit of a kink for her, mm-hmm. but I just never really saw it. But I kind of saw it in this film, probably because she was half naked. But it's difficult mm-hmm. to not be sexy when you're half naked riding around in bed with your vampire lesbian lover, honestly. <clears throat> yeah. So um, along with this. We're talking about the hunger, but we are also discussing, uh, thanks to your suggestion, (laughs) (laughs) sort of, uh, well, you describe it, because I, when I think of, uh, when I think of a thruple, then my, my take on it is probably a little more like, this just sounds like a lot of (laughs) Well, it was more like, like, more like ethical non-monogamous like relationships and like open relationships and stuff where it's kind of like because I have been having some experience with that lately to a point where it's now kind of become a joke because even when I don't seek it out it still it just apparently finds me like the last Mm -hmm. hang on five encounters wow have all been apart from last night um have all been um in m situations and i and i was like right no more if i see a a peak of this because i'm like this is fine whatever it's all above board so for people who don't know in m situations so ethical non-monogamous is when one or more partners um with consent from their other partner can go off and sleep and date other people and like it's all fine and there's lots of different reasons why people might do that uh it's all above board you know they know who the other person is and like as much or as little information as they want that's within the realms of appropriation for everyone involved right so it's very open it's very honest it's not shady or anything you know it's actually a very respectful thing as long as everyone board is okay and we all respect each other's boundaries right <clears throat> but at the end of the day i still have to give them back you know <laughs> And they also Mm. often comes with certain boundaries that kind of make it a bit restrictive. So, for example, I um, I, I've never been allowed around somebody else's house for obvious reasons. So they always have to come to me. Um, It also means that, you know, they have a whole other life. So they're not always free when I'm free and vice versa, you know, Um, things like that so it can be a bit restrictive but it is also kind of fun and also because I don't want a relationship it's a nice safety net for me knowing that like it's not gonna go any further than that but at the same time it's kind of like I don't like to share 
<laughs> but mm-hmm. I actually matched with somebody today and it's on his profile that he's married and in an open relationship. But his profile was so good. It was like lots of green flags. So I was like, all right, fine. I guess I'll do one more. <laughs> <laughs> But I end up like, yeah, it's just it's just kind of become a joke now because I'd literally I'm like, I don't even seek it out. Like I was chatting with this guy for a few days, nothing about it on his profile. And then all of we're getting on so well. He's a horror fan. We're chatting about A24 and shit, you know, and like he's like, um, you know, really smart. He reads, you know, like he like for pleasure and shit. And so we're talking about books. We're into the same sort of music. We've got the same sort of sense of humor. Really great guy. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. He only lives down the, like not down the road, down the road, but like relatively nearby. And like three days in, he's just like, oh, I should probably tell you I am married. (sighs) But plot twist, the wife is fit as fuck. And she is also open and by curious mm-hmm. oh, but wow. I just literally found out yesterday which is why I went on a little bit of a one night stand last night because I was just frustrated because he was supposed to be coming around this week and he just landed on me yesterday that like she wants everything to kind of slow down a little bit and I'm just like oh fine whatever I respect your decision I guess whatever but ugh, blue ball me much um <laughs> <laughs> but it's I mean obviously like you know it's this point but I'm like whatever it's your you know those are the boundaries I don't want to be like you know I've been such an asshole to strop about it out loud um so instead mm. I'll just have re- really mean the sex with someone who I've like literally met that afternoon instead <laughs> um, but like yeah so like that's annoying because I was really interested in him and her but never mind <clears throat> but yeah so anyways I thought it'd be quite fun to to chat about kind of like thruples and you know open relationships polyamorous relationships stuff like that you know um and you suggested this one and it was great because I I said I'd never seen it before but I've been wanting to see it for quite a while like I sort of like knew of its reputation and how it was this like subculture goth vampire movie and that's honestly all you need and then you add in shit like David Bowie and I'm like oh give it to me and yeah and like I think Catherine Deneuve I mean, ever since Repulsion, Mm -hmm. you know, I've had a crush on her. Yeah. And so seeing her as this sort of vampire Mm -hmm. matron, um, who, so it won't take us long to talk about this movie because there's like three things that happen. (laughs) It's like a very, very, very long music video. It very much is. In fact, it starts off. Scott's background, to be fair. Yeah, the first, like, the first 10 minutes or something is like, well, do you know what? And actually, I looked it up and it turns out this was actually a big influence. I was just the whole way through reminded of um, Hotel season of American Horror Story with the Countess and Donovan and stuff, especially that open scene um, and, you know, the comparisons between the scene where they seduce that couple while watching Nosferatu and, and the part, you've seen, you, must, you saw it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, Jesus Christ, this must have been in it. Like, and it was. So, like, you know, Ryan Murphy's not trying to hide anything with it because he'd be doing a terrible job if he were. Um, but, like, I was just like, so, like, part of me, because I love that season, like, and that whole sequence just, fuck my life. We're not here to talk about that. Um, but uh, anyone who's, see, who's seen it will know what I mean. Um, and it was just, it was, I was like, oh man, if if we're going to get like a whole movie of that type of thing, yes, please, you know? And it was exactly mm-hmm. how, I mean, the, the, the style of this film and everything was just so sexy and dark and gothic and like, ooh, you know? so good and then having Bauhaus at the beginning and stuff as well is fucking genius like I love that dark synth wave pop shit like it's so fucking oh it's my jam um so like that was all really fucking cool so I was I, I was so like happy that you'd chosen this film and I thought it was like a nice little little fucking segue into these sorts of themes yeah it's very pretty this yeah. movie and it's almost a movie like I really, really like it. I don't love the hunger because I, I at the end of the day, I think it's only so substantial. Yeah. You know, it's it, it it's a very whipped cream kind of movie <laughs> where it's wonderfully sweet and it's really it, it's like delicious yeah. to watch. But at the end of the day, it's 
there are some interesting themes, but if you took out all of the scenes of like billowing curtains <laughs> and, you know, Deneuve looking meaningfully at the middle distance while smoking a cigarette. <laughs> oh, I smoke so much if watching you... this film. Like I don't normally smoke in my flat because I don't really like to do that, but like I had to with this. I mean, constantly somebody is just looking hot yeah. and smoking. And uh, so, but if you cut all that stuff out or just shortened it all, like this movie would be like 37 yeah, minutes yeah. long. And, uh, but, but it's, it, it's a fascinating movie. And like you said, it starts off with Bauhaus singing Bela yeah. Lugosi's dead. <laughs> and it's, uh, it, you know, as you pointed out, it is Deneuve and Bowie seducing a couple and taking them back home and you realize that oh they are yeah. vampires <laughs> it is uh but in kind of an untraditional sort of way like they have these little onk necklaces yeah, with blades. little yeah. daggers and yeah and they just use that Holy to turn. you know slice open a neck and yeah. feed well again it's like um you know the countess in hotel with her glove you know they don't mm -hmm. actually bite as such they cut them open and then drink their blood yeah but yeah no it's, it's cool though because obviously back in 83 we hadn't like that that wasn't really there was vampires bit do you know what I mean that was the law you know you didn't really see it right like that and it's like it's a really kind of like sexy thing with it being like a piece of jewelry and obviously like the unk as well it's like a symbolism of life so there's that kind of like um irony there also um and like it's just it's very very cool way of doing it very yes that i mean and that is the thing about this movie is that it is just dripping mm. with cool and uh yeah so that is sort of your opening of the movie is this like seduction scene with uh bowie with the the woman in the kitchen and Deneuve seducing the guy in the mm. living room and music is playing and it's all very, you know, hip and cool. And um, th then after they feed and we realize that they just like, there's a an incinerator yeah. in the basement that they just use to toss everything into. Yeah. And, and, and we start to get the story of who these people are. And Deneuve has been around for, I mean, she was like a queen in Egypt. Yeah, and she's, well, because it's like, she has, like, I don't know how many lovers she has in there, but there's like a good chunk, like she's got to be a few thousand years old, if they're all lasting about 300 years Right, and that—that's the thing. Like the, the the thing that I find most interesting is sort of Deneuve's mm -hmm. character and her, like what makes her a real villain in this movie isn't that she's a vampire; no. it's how dishonest she yeah. is. Maybe, maybe with herself, even certainly um, victims. Certainly so, and because in a lot of times uh, when you're talking about a vampire movie, like when we talked about Kiss yeah. of the Damned. Uh, another incredibly sexy. <laughs> we do have this movie. as a theme. I feel like a recurring. I, oh, I'm, I'm not complaining. complaining at all. But when the the female vampire in that, you know, takes her lover and turns him, it's hard to think of him totally as a victim because he kind oh, of he wants does, it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they're here. just going to lead this totally life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he was he, he was, was asking, asking for, for it. Yeah. He's wearing a short skirt and then he high drunk, heels, you know. <laughs> parading that jugular vein around. <laughs> what was I supposed to he do? He was just asking for, <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 Wasn't wearing no scarf or nothing. <laughs> he didn't even try to hide it with his hands. Guy's got no shame. Fucking ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chained it to the bed and then let it go. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but, 
so it's it's you know like that was a character that was like yes i want to live a life of eternity yeah. with you on account of you being so redheaded and hot <laughs> 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 yeah that's not that's yeah. there's, there's no lie there <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. and also the fact that like prior to that she had gotten horned up to a shocking degree and he was like i'm mm-hmm. here for this um we should be horny <laughs> together for eternity <laughs> and whereas in this well like we get the flashback where uh bowie is um like at like a french courtesan yeah. or something like you know he's playing the cello like playing chamber music back in the olden that, days that probably in the yeah like in the 1700s yeah it makes sense because 300 years right yeah and like they fall in love or in lust with each other and she tells him you know forever i'll be with you forever <laughs> yeah. and uh forever and ever <laughs> And so she turns him and then the the real thrust of the movie is uh, right after they kill this couple, he starts to realize that he is starting to age and age rapidly. Yeah. And so the question is why and what can be done yeah. about it? And so enter Susan Sarandon, who is a researcher who is currently working on this tie between aging and sleep and has written this book um and there's a a great line where i think is it bowie who's reading the book and he says why is it that people write these books in a way that no one can read them (laughs) yeah it's so true though (laughs) yeah but he gets the idea of like hey i'm gonna go find this this Mm. person and see if there's some way to reverse these effects And so he shows up at her place of business and is like, look, I know I'm quite cool, but I'm aging rapidly. And uh, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we got a crazy one in the lobby. Uh, But from the time that he shows up in the lobby to the time that he that she returns to see him. He is aged 40, like yeah, well, forty. Years. He's like it was about like fifty when she's left him, and then he's like a ninety when she sees him again. Right. Mm. Hey, I used to sing life on <laughs> Mars. Do you know who I am? I'm Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> My hair keeps falling out. <laughs> um. And and she's like, oh my god, I didn't, I had no idea. And he's like, you can go fuck yourself. I can't believe I wasted my last good years in the lobby. You son of a bitch. Now I'm gonna go to a early afternoon buffet. Watch my stories. Start voting Republican. Watch some burgers she wrote. I'll still have people do. Drink my tea. Yeah. on the porch yeah. <laughs> complain about the music these kids listen to complain about the music I used to make <laughs> yesterday tin machine what the hell <laughs> these kids and these drugs I need to go back and listen to tin machine that mo- that is probably really good music now I remember not liking it at the time and Duncan and I have talked about this before but anytime like David Bowie put out an album that I was like, I don't like this. I'm like, I need to give this about 20 years <laughs> until I catch up with it. Yeah, I get that. Because, <laughs> is, you know, like I'm just now getting to the point where I'm like, yeah, that 80s stuff was <laughs> great. Yeah, same. <laughs> you know, at the time I hated it. I was like, let's dance sucks. And now I'm like, let's That's dance is great. Awesome. Remember when it was like re released back in like 2005 or some shit? Yeah, it's like this song is fantastic. Why is, why am I uh, why am I not smart enough to listen to David Bowie <laughs> at the time? You can actually see him live. Oh, do you know what I was mean, sad though? As I was watching it and he's all aging, I was like, he never even got to those years in real life. I yeah, I thought about that too. Isn't that odd? But also, kind of, 
like I am not for somebody that is that brilliant going no. young. And I, I felt like David Bowie had more to yeah. give the world. But also he died at a point where he was still at kind of the top of his game when he like he he never got old and just disappeared because dementia yeah. set in and you're like whatever happened to david yeah Bowie? he never you he know? was never a husband yeah absolutely he was all he, like when he died it was like holy shit david Bo- oh, an icon has yeah. left us and you know i mean he maybe he would have been tony bennett though like somebody that just kept popping up in the public eye until the day he died um but yeah but yeah i i had that thought too when he was like oh he never got to be like 85 Mm -hmm. years old and all wrinkled and hunched over and complaining about the music the kids listen to today i don't think he'd have ever complained about the music i you know he just he needed to make one more david lynch yeah uh because he was always like when he showed up in firewalk with me it was like, this is the greatest oh thing. oh yeah yeah so good um, anyway yeah so he's fucked off being a little old grumpy old man <laughs> right i'm getting some pudding <laughs> and he takes off and susan sarandon is like holy shit that guy got super old super fast that's weird <laughs> that's weird right you guys saw this that's weird yeah we're all on the same page that's weird <laughs> <laughs> anybody else see that i mean that's unusual <laughs> at, at yeah. least right it's not what we normally see hey come back here old man why could why she couldn't catch up with an old guy i don't know right well she was wearing impossible Very heels true. for her science <laughs> job like why are you not wearing snibs? <laughs> Some sneakers Some bumps, mm-hmm. something just, yeah, something that just makes sense. You're on your feet yeah, all day. I'm sorry. No woman who's on her feet all day is wearing fucking high heels. I can tell you that much. I, I One of my favorite stripper. things to see in movies. <laughs> like, yeah, a stripper. Yeah, they sit down um, to chat usually. Don't they get a boost and whatnot? I, I love it when I'm watching a movie about, uh, uh, about teaching. Like I, I, surprise, surprise. I love movies about teachers <laughs> in schools yeah and and anytime you see a movie where like the teachers are wearing high heels like these are people who have never been to a school i've never once seen a teacher in a classroom wearing no not even like the little low heels like no it's it just just you do not you just don't right it's pumps to sneakers that is the Mm -hmm. range and the pumps are like low heel pumps. I oh, mean, they're bet, is... yeah, on the floor. It's like a dap. Yeah. Do you guys call them daps? Is that an English thing? I don't think so. I don't. But it, look, this could just be a flaw in my women's. Football no, this is like not... you wear daps as kids, kind of thing. It's like those real kind of like sl- slip on. Oh yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Those kind of ballet slippers. Yeah, like kind of things. pumps or like yeah daps kind of thing. Like depending on how smart they are. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah yeah uh, no one's fucking wearing heels yeah, but so, well it's yeah it, i mean it's like when God, you they, see like fucking in cop shows and they're like running in the, they go they go for like field work in fucking heels it's like who the fuck's doing that how are you gonna fucking run criminals down the streets of new york in fucking high heels so stupid i <laughs> I had that moment when I was, you know, I, I'm kind of going back through the show right. Justified. Yeah, this is me going back through like criminal the, minds and shit. <laughs> yeah, right. I just, I love Justified. I think it's a terrific show. Walton Goggins can do <laughs> no wrong. And uh, <laughs> that is an impression I've been working on and it sucks. <laughs> I'm nowhere even Okay, close. I'm excited for when you are though. Yeah, I want, you know, uh, the the closest I can get now is Raylan. That's it. That's all I got. I go past that one word and it just sounds like trash. <laughs> like a pastry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I could go for a pastry. Oh, actually, um, quick story. I had an, I did some like Uber yes. Eats grocery today because it was raining. And honestly, I could not be asked to get dressed today. I got dressed later because sure. a friend came over, but I, no, nah, I'll order in. And I, and I realized I had nothing for breakfast. And I was like, do you know what? It's Sunday. I'm going to order some pan chocolat. And the Fuckers apparently mm. couldn't find it in store. Ugh. 
fucking oh. good are you? <sighs> Very disappointing. So I just had coffee. Mm, oh, all right then. Fucking good for you. What do you have with them? Mm-hmm. Uh, banana. Wait, wait, hang on. Sorry, what? You just had no sauce? Oh, I mean, oh, there was some okay. right, but... Because I was like, the fuck? Yeah, yeah, no, there's some Okay, because you were about to come off as a psychopath then. <laughs> you know, like, you want a glass of milk with that? I actually quite like uh, drinking milk <laughs> I, uh, I dated someone who, uh, cause I would say like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. have a waffle. And she was like, it's waffles. Like you eat more than one waffle when you're eating waffles. And I'm like, it's a big waffle. You know, I'm not going to eat two of these. Cause they're like, it fills yeah. the plate. Yeah. And, uh, but she, she started teasing me about it. Like, Oh, are you having <laughs> waffle today? And I was like, it's not a fucking ego. It's like a, it's like a drop of full size yeah no man waffles are filling when they're big enough like we have a waffle house down the road yeah. and you were you were barely eating one like you if you get through that like right, good yeah. for you when i when i make them uh then there's always two and i eat one and i've got yeah. one the next day because there it, there's always enough uh yeah mix for just two. would you whack them with the toaster or would you whack them with the grill to reheat uh you know i microwave really? it. it it's Isn't totally it? fine because oh. yeah yeah yeah. you fill in the little squares yeah, though, right them in for a better syrup, you, you fill them in okay cool, cool oh cool, sure cool. sure 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 like it's it, yeah it's not dried out and yeah. gross or anything you know some people um, they just like and, haphazardly just sort of like drizzle it it's like the fuck are you doing the holes are there for a reason like yeah i mean that's that's the upside of a waffle over pancakes well, yeah. is that they yeah, yeah they well, have yeah, little exactly. syrup pockets so, they, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, if you do it right, they're kind of crispy yeah. outside and, and fluffy yeah. inside anyway. Oh. And so they, they hold pretty well, like heat oh, them up is fine. Is. I just um, thought it might make it a bit soggy. Surprisingly oh, okay, cool. not. Yeah. The, the crispiness of it. And, you know, I, I think I've got a pretty good waffle nice. iron too. Oh, so, mm, <sighs> I know. Um, uh i'm it's a short 12 hour plane ride and i will happily make <laughs> you and your child no waffles. fuck off she's staying here i will come oh, all right well and enjoy your waffles she can stay with her dad <laughs> that's uh, that's what i've got on my mat right at the doors enjoy my waffles <laughs> um what was the point of any of this oh yeah so anyway so susan sarandon l- tracks down bowie to uh catherine deneuve's place but before she can get there a couple of things have happened one the little Uh, girl that they're teaching music to shows up and bowie thinking hey i'm aging (laughs) super fast maybe if i eat her virgin blood and all that i will you're right and that doesn't work but she does he does end up killing this child yeah. Oh, the music in this though is and gorgeous, Deneuve, isn't it? Oh, it's Fucking so gosh. good. Um, and when Danuve gets home, though, she's like, "What did you do? <laughs> you killed this little girl." Yeah, well, she liked it, didn't she? She kind of had there like a bit of a like a mentor thing going on. Yeah, this is what we liked. We said we were not going yeah. to eat her. She is a pet. Um. <laughs> She seemed kind of nice. <laughs> I reckon it's just he's pissy because she said that she, she liked Cousin to know better. Yes. Well, in. Because she doesn't realize that it's John because he looks like an old man. And he sort of says, like, yeah, oh, no, she, I'm this buddy, just... you know. And then she's just like, yeah, that yeah, Johnny's it... such a fucking prick. <laughs> no, she's not. But like. He's a. She she's a little cool on she's like I like I like her yeah more like he's than just him. difficult to gauge like he's just a little bit standoffish or whatever. It's, I'll show you right. standoffish. <laughs> How about I just stand yeah. on your corpse? Give me that neck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How about you come over here and give me that neck? Let's <laughs> dance. <laughs> Pull out my little knife and drink your blood. The remix. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, uh Miriam oh, yeah, that's is right, her yeah, name. Miriam. She's real Miriam! pissed off. Um yeah, she's real pissed off and and Bowie rightfully is like you you kind of fucked me on this whole deal. You didn't tell me about this yeah. part of it. And how long do I have? And she's like, I don't know, maybe an hour, <laughs> maybe two. What? I don't. I've got the casket for you. You don't <laughs> like it. He's like, Fit, fucking what? <laughs> right. And also, I want to know. Sorry, ends- I want to know how she yeah. is carting around all of these coffins with her previous lovers for hundreds of years, and he's not noticed this shit. Does he not notice the fucking post and packaging costs every time they move? Yeah. L- yeah. Listeners, write in uh, if if you have a different read of this. Because my read on it, too, was like he wasn't yeah, aware same. that this was going to happen to him. I thought he wasn't aware. And, yeah. And, but yeah, she, she's he, like, he says, like, oh, on, forever, like, oh, yeah, forever. Fucking whatever, love. You know. I don't know. Right. And, she's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, forever. Yeah. You are so small now. I'm going to pick you up <laughs> and take you upstairs and you can have your own coffin. <laughs> and that's what she does. Yeah. She just picks him up like an <laughs> infant, like a sack of <laughs> mop handles and Flops takes him upstairs. Right. And and then she's like, you know, putting her hand on another coffin. It's like, oh, Estelle, this is his first night. Be gentle. <laughs> and it's like, how fucked up is this? Like the rest of your life is just living. Yeah, because the they don't die, do they? Coffin. They're like they're still right. there. They're just just withering and decrepit and right. Just yeah, they're just yeah, fucked. Can you imagine that, man. That is um, that. I'd rather die. Like, absolutely, and that's the so that's the thing that either Danuv is lying to herself about, like, well, you know, maybe the next one will be a good um or or she's just yeah. selfish you know that is that and i think alone. that's probably the case and also as well he's yeah. like he's like have you already picked like your next lover and she's just like no <laughs> look at me no it's fine no i haven't done shit <clears throat> sarah <laughs> like <laughs> right and- like she before he's even in the coffin she's like scoping out her next her next lover sort of thing like it's like Jesus Christ, let the guy just settle for a minute. Do you know what I mean? Like, give it a beat. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but you have gotten kind of <laughs> I gross. I suppose i give you one last kiss. Disgusting. I can't give you a kiss, but if we try to fuck, your penis could just pop <laughs> off. Because you are so old. Did I mention you are quite <laughs> gross? <laughs> yeah, yes. I never thought I'd say that about David Bowie, but, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty gross. It doesn't even really look like him, does he? So much for style, it doesn't it, even it, look yeah, like him anymore. Um, oh. although the it, it, who who did Dick Smith, I think, is who did the makeup for this. It was either Dick Smith or Rick Baker. Oh, okay. Too. okay. Um, but it's pretty good. Old it age, very makeup. good, especially for eighty three. Fucking hell. Yeah, and um. Oh yeah, I was trying to find the who who did the the special makeup. At any rate, um, it was one of the two, and I can't remember if it was old Dick Smith or young Rick Baker. One of the two, um, Dick Smith. Okay. that's who did. Yeah. So guy who did yeah, yeah, Exorcist yeah. and all that. All, also, some of the best old age makeup on Max, Max von Sydow. Yeah, on that yeah, no, he's good. He's good at the old age stuff. <laughs> You need somebody to look old. You, you get Dick Smith. Get old Dick in. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, get Dick in here. No, not that kind. Oh, I just yeah. And but yeah, so she plops him in this coffin, covers him up, tells all the other half skeletons that she's got up there that you know, like, hey, please keep an eye on. Don't be mean to him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> is she not italian <laughs> i don't know I've, it's basically turning into the swinging check brothers from saturday out live the 
we are two wild and crazy <laughs> guys. <laughs> we are two wild and crazy <laughs> vampires. Yeah, and like I just I don't I don't know like because it, it seems weird because she does still seem to love them all. Like she doesn't want to she doesn't let them go. She keeps them with her. She like you know she talks to them and stuff, and she seems like genuinely upset like at least at john's passing and stuff like you know didn't she cry and shit she yeah she does <laughs> but it's still a fucked up thing to do but to she's somebody like, 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 years old, does... you're gonna be a little bit jaded by that point it's one thing to be jaded but just don't go from one relationship to another like give it a cooling I mean, down period of like a alive, couple of like, decades well yeah, yeah that's true uh but yeah it's uh, you know but it also means that she's going like that's the real monstrous part of her less that she is murdering people it's more that she's condemning these people where you have like 300 good years and then an eternity yeah. it's not that i, I would i would say it would dark. be fine if they died because i mean that's an extra 200 plus years that you're giving someone and they get to be young and pretty and yeah, healthy oh, the sure. whole time you know but the fact is is that at the end of that you then spend the rest of your life a fucking part of dust with conscience like your sentience you know like um and that's yeah like it doesn't matter how long you are alive for like it's in having it you know being cool and vampirical and shit when the rest of eternity is going to be torture you know yeah absolutely right like a hundred percent but that's kind of where this other relationship starts up with her and yeah. Sarandon. And, you know, because Susan Sarandon comes knocking, looking for David Bowie. And she's like, oh, he is not here. But have you considered, you know, taking off your top after I spill some wine <laughs> on it? <laughs> You're wiped up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I have spilled some wine and yeah and ends up uh uh getting her to to and like the way that we're describing this as, as happening quickly it happens that quickly. Yeah, it really movie. is it's like it's just and also as well like sarah's d- is dating one of her co-workers like they live together they're in a full-blown relationship and everything and it's like so quick she's <laughs> like fuck that guy i want tits you know <laughs> like yeah um and obviously there's some sort of like supernatural persuasion seduction thing going on you know but what i love is how like you know they're chilling out drinking sherry and um and yeah miriam's playing lacme's flower duet and she's telling Mm -hmm. the story behind it about the prince uh, princess i think isn't it or something and like and you know she's basically like it's kind of like that Mrs. Robinson thing. It's like, are you trying to seduce me? No. Would you like me to seduce you kind of thing, you know? Um, and because like, yeah, because seasons around Sarah is like, oh, it kind of sounds like you're making a pass at me. It's like, no, but also yes, <laughs> you know? Um, and it's... <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. And then like in the next scene, it's just like, whoopsie. Oh no, you must take off your top and you're not wearing a bra. How convenient. <laughs> And um, <laughs> even though you just oh, I forgot it is the early eighties, <laughs> and like you've just come from your workplace when you're wearing a white top right. with no bra, and you work with a bunch of men. Like, fair enough. That's not me being a dickhead and being like, you know, women should be able to wear what they want. However, <laughs> like, right, right, that's also at work and stuff, and it's just I just wouldn't. Like, I would never. I mean, to be fair, I can't not wear a bra. My boobs are just they're a fucking hazard without a bra on <laughs> just oh, for, yeah like for reals um so <laughs> did i tell you sorry this is totally off topic well kind of but not really but kind of did i tell you about the time where i was running for for the bus and a boob fell out <laughs> fell out no you did not tell me because this is my fucking ridiculous pair of tits sorry like i mean it's literally that i was running for the bus the bus was about to pull off and I was wearing like a low cut vest top. Well, not even that low cut, but it's just impossible for it to not be low cut with me. And just like a normal bra, but it was 
but again normal bras are still I mean I'm looking at my boobs now and like it's I just I can't there's not much I can do all right and so anyways Mm. I start really like you know pounding the pavement with my feet not my tits for clarity here Mm -hmm. um Mm. but yeah like running and then a, a boob just falls out as I approached the fucking bus with everyone fucking looking at me. And then I had to, I had to get that bus because I was gonna, I don't know why I had to get that. I I knew I had to, I remember I had to be somewhere like really important. And I had to do the walk of shame down the fucking bus. Like I had put my boot back in obviously, but still it was, it was a long ass fucking bus journey. Let's put it that way. (laughs) Yeah. It's just, it's pretty awful. The bus driver definitely got an eyeful. There is just no male equivalent of that. Like, there has never been a point where I'm like, I was running so hard and so fast that one of my <laughs> balls came out. Well, no, because everything's fucking designed to keep you tucked in. Right, yeah. I yeah. don't have that. Like, and even if I was wearing, like a, uh, a, like, a polo neck, my boob would still fall out of its bra. It would just be, like, bouncing around the time the top i mean that'd be less embarrassing because i wouldn't have my nipples out on the show but like i'd still it's like bras are just crap for any unless you want to literally wear a sports bra which i tend to not like maybe i should maybe i should just start on i mean i, I feel like we're coming to some important yeah maybe i should just start wearing sports bras as like bra bras but um but yeah like if you're gonna <laughs> you can wear a bra bra over while you're reading a book book. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I yeah, I, yeah bra bras <laughs> I can't fucking say that. <laughs> Normal bras are just not designed to uh-huh. keep the ladies contained very well if you having to move more than one mile per hour. Anyway, that's that's my embarrassing boob at the bus story continue <laughs> so oh yeah so she's getting a top off uh, apparently right. yeah susan serena was running for the bus <laughs> and oops her boobs I, I, another thing i was thinking is uh, when this scene comes up susan serena has led a remarkable yeah. life like she's in rocky horror a cult movie that goes on to yeah, this day she's disowned it she I mean, regardless, it's yeah. still hers. And uh, she made out with Catherine yeah. Deneuve. And then she had an affair with David Bowie as lived... well during this film, didn't she? Yeah, Did she, really? she like admitted it in an interview or something like a while ago. Oh, yeah. my God. Can you imagine? I mean, yes, I can imagine. <laughs> Frequently. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm imagining it right now um yeah so like they're anyway just one of those things of like you know Catherine Deneuve, this, this icon of international mm. cinema and that i wonder if every time susan sarandon like sees her when you know she's nominated for like indochine <laughs> for an oscar and she's like i've had my mouth on yeah tits. nothing on top that i mean how would you not like this is Oscar's great. Oscars are great and all, but have you ever had your mouth around Catherine Deneuve's tits? No. Because I if win. not, I uh, and I, I recommend it. it. Yeah, she has great boobs. Oh yeah, I mean some of the great. Some of the greats. <laughs> some of the greats like that. Uh, I've never Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet does have she amazing does have boobs. boobs. Um. I saw just take a moment for Kate Winslet boobs. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, surprisingly, I don't know if you ever watched that uh, uh, Marvelous Mrs. No, Maisel I've show. heard you talk about it so much, though. I feel like I have. And Rachel Brosnahan. Got some good boobs. Yeah. Amazing. Eva Green's yeah. got some good boobs. Ava Green. Oh, have you seen boobs. Megan Fox's Instagram account lately? Fuck. I have not. She is definitely doing that post breakup, like get naked online thing. Oh, did she and Michigan oh, Kelly? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're done. I, yeah, I think okay. he cheated on her. I know. I just don't understand that mentality. Like, 
mate, you were not all that. You are a six at best. You bag yes. Megan Fox, and not you do even not that fuck talented. that up. Yeah. Megan yeah, Fox yeah, yeah. is a fucking treasure. And she just keeps on giving, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna like, have to get oh an my Instagram god, Christ. Account. Mate, I'll just you don't even need an, I'll send you the links. You don't need an Instagram account. It's like TikTok, <laughs> you can just go on it even without an account. I will send it to Great. you. Don't worry, bro, I'll hook you up. Yeah, <laughs> I man. appreciate it. Any I can always go with like I am not the biggest Megan Fox fan in terms of her acting, <gasps> but she is unquestionably like one of the like drop dead. <sighs> like jaw on the floor she's just like most she's had like she's had surgery and shit obviously like she's botox her eyeballs and shit but like she still looks so good like i'm such a pervert over megan fox and i don't even care i don't even care she's just so fucking fit right like yeah, I mean again the things no I would let her do to me man I, you know what I would go all fucking weird with her do you know what I, you know, when they was like oh my god they're so weird they're going, <laughs> I would go all you know, weird like, you know because like, they were doing like didn't they drink each other's blood they did the whole fucking Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina yeah, yeah. Jolie routine uh-huh. and I was like oh my god they're so fucking weird I'm like if, if Megan Fox wants to drink my, she is drinking my blood if she wants to shave off my hair and wear it as a wig she gets to shave off my hair and wear it as a wig. I don't. I don't give a fuck. Megan Fox can literally do whatever the fuck she wants to me. I don't care. I mean, that works for about what sixty days, and then after that, you're gonna be like, I. You know what? You reckon? You're you're weird. Nah, because all she's got to do is drop her clothes, and I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. What was I saying? I'm an idiot. Oh right. I'm right, like, yeah, right. sorry, what is it that you wanted on um, apologies for ever doubting me? <laughs> Let me get between your legs. Yeah. I don't mm, I'm trying to think who who my person is that I would just be like, no matter how weird things get, all I have to do is see you naked and I'm mm-hmm. fine again. Like your reset button. Right. I mean it might still be Elizabeth. Really? Shue. I know she's like sixty years old now. Really? I, I just apparently got the I, Elizabeth Shue really? always did it for me. Yeah. Or I'll tell you I, another one is uh, like Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, she's hot. yeah. I mean that's. I also just think because Megan Fox a, does have that kind of wild woman esque to her. A little, a little bit, bit of crazy, crazy for yeah, sure. and I. It, like I could, I wouldn't be like that even if I like I really fancy the shit out of Mila Kunis. Uh huh. But if she started saying weird shit to me, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? That's just kind of weird. But for some reason, it just works with Megan Fox. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah anyway, <clears throat> what were we talking about, babes? Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Because what's the thing? <laughs> we, you know what? We are taking a long time to get through this sex scene. So <clears throat> yeah, um, Miriam's got good boobs. Yeah, so they they have a lesbian yeah. encounter, and afterwards, uh, like, and Miriam has her drink some of her yeah. blood. To quote Buffy, first you have to suck their blood, then they suck your blood, and it's like a whole big sucking thing. Yeah, <laughs> and so now, uh, you know, uh, 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 Susan Sarandon is infected mm-hmm. and goes off to her date with her boyfriend who is like what were you doing all day and she's um, like oh i went by yeah sorry i took severe umbrage with this like you just met a woman how are you talking to them for three and a half hours uh was that woman we because i can guarantee yeah. you i can talk to someone i just met for three and a half hours. in fact i met this woman who is now a good friend of mine um randomly at a coffee shop and we, her kids started chatting to me. I wasn't even with my kid. I was actually watching horror movies on my laptop. Um, so I quickly shut my laptop. And um, they were like chatting to me for some fucking known reason. And um, she came over and she was doing the whole, oh God, I'm sorry for my asshole kids kind of thing. And I was like, oh no, 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 great. And then we started chatting and we swapped numbers. And then we went out for a coffee and we spent four hours chatting. And I literally met her like two days ago. Oh. 
So I was oh, like, when great. he's all like, how oh, are you going to talk about? Are you gonna... I'm like, everything. You do not know women? <laughs> like, do you even know how women work? Like, clearly not, because she's quite happy to fuck one without even s- second thinking about you. So clearly there's something missing there. So, well, and asshole. <laughs> he, uh, she also says, oh, well, we, you know, we drink some sherry. And he's like, what? You hate yeah, sherry. Yeah, gives you a headache. And she's like, yeah, but it was Catherine yeah. Deneuve. When she and... says, here, have some sherry, you have some sherry. Right. I mean, have you seen her tits? Because <laughs> I have. <laughs> Right. Guess what else I drink? Um, in the side of yeah. those boobies. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> uh, the the boyfriend is feeling a little bit on the outs. And meanwhile, uh, Susan Sarandon is starting to get like twitchy and, and She's weird. very distracted by vision, and, isn't she? Of Nave right. swimming naked. And so she has to, like, kind of go running back to Catherine Deneuve. By the way, the movie completely abandons any of the plot about the sleep study Uh, and aging and all that stuff. (laughs) That's That's gone. gone. (laughs) Although they have quite a nice little moment where, like, because she goes and speaks to, like, her colleagues because they're all, like, blood specialists and shit. And they run, like, a sample and stuff. And it's kind of like a cool science where it's like, oh, these two blood types, they're, like, fighting out dominance sort of thing. Like, I mean, I don't know what kind of science that is, but it seemed cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, and like that, I just quite like that scene sort of thing because, like, I don't know, it just, I like, I like stuff when it's really fantastical, but it can also be explained, even if it's in dumb movie science. It has like a, an explanation. <laughs> yeah. It's not just like, oh, just because it is. It's kind of like, oh, there's some sort of, if I say this confidently enough, it sounds like science. Like that's fine. Like I don't, I don't care how legit it is, but I just quite like it when they when they do that in films. So I thought that scene was kind of cool. But yeah, then after that, it's just like, all right, cool, bye, Charlie. No one needs you. Yeah, and you're right. So she takes off, uh, goes back to Catherine Deneuve, and is like, "Hey, what's going on with me?" And she's like, "You are becoming a vampire." <laughs> Did you not and know? Did I not tell you? It- it is quite sexy. Um, you have a good time, no? What's and, the problem? Right, and basically tells her, like, hey, you're going to live forever. Lies. Uh, right, you know, and, and uses the same line, you're going to live forever and ever. Uh, We're going to have sexy times all and, the time. And drink sherry. <laughs> so, you will learn to love me as I <laughs> love you. <laughs> that is called Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> right <laughs> eventually you will just come around to it eventually uh, you will just tolerate me because you have no one else <laughs> all of your friends and loved ones will be dead <laughs> yeah you will want to eat their their brains and no they don't she doesn't do that you want to eat suck their blood and <laughs> so you have to yeah. isolate yourself with me alone in my ivory tower Right. Well, and that's I think kind of the the gimmick for Deneuve is that she just wants someone, you know, to to yeah. to be with, and it doesn't matter who they are. Uh, I mean, it matters a little bit, but mostly it's just I, you know, I want someone that I have, I just someone I yeah. can talk to, and like I can chat to you and find sexy and stuff. That's mm-hmm. fair enough. You know, I, that's what we all want. Yeah, it. It is up until oh, right, um, apart from the murder and shit, fine, whatever. Well, and but not just that. It's like she's not really. It's not as if Susan Sarandon, you know, again, like the kiss of the damn thing. Like, it's, it's, she's not like, yes, I want to be yeah. with you. You are, you know, Catherine Deneuve after all, and I want to spend eternity with you. It's just like, hey, I have done this to you. Uh, in time, you will be cool <laughs> yeah. with it. And and so that's kind of where things stand, and um, and then Deneuve like is like, hey, I brought uh, someone over to for you to eat, and what you do? (laughs) Right? Yeah, I mean, he is asking for it. Uh, it. The way he chooses gum spits it. Ugh, hate gum spits. And. (laughs) 
uh, so it's like you know once you feed on him you will know what it's like to taste blood and it will be great <laughs> and uh and that's kind of what happens so, like she ends up drinking blood in this scene and then goes to uh denuve and as they're you know like her mouth covered oh no in she blood. kills she kills tom her, her bloke well, oh, she right. is um, right. basically Miriam can't hold her, hold herself back, and she kills the guy. And then, right. and then Tom tries to find her because she's been missing all damn day. And then he's like, "Oh, like have you seen her? She came by here." It's like, "Yes, yeah, she upstairs." What well, is your problem? <laughs> and he's like, "She's like, right. I guess I'll go there then." <laughs> and then she's all like writhing around mm-hmm. on the floor as like she's like the infection's taking over and shit. And then like, ah, kills him just like that (laughs) yeah and once that's done she goes to denuve um and they embrace but she then takes denuve's like dagger knife yeah yeah and and cuts i thought she did miriam's at first i did too and i've seen this a number of times but even then i was like wait did she stab her miriam's eyes widen in shock Obviously, she's in shock at what's yeah. happened, but like it really, the way it's edited makes it look like she's done it to Miriam. Yeah, but it was she yeah. did it to herself and is bleeding out yeah. all over. And this so... is kind of where the film lost me. Like, not in terms of my interest, but just in terms of what well, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, right. Okay, so here's what okay. I think happens. And here's what we know. <laughs> Is that she ends up going upstairs with Susan Sarandon's body? Yeah. To basically put her in the on the (laughs) pile, put on the slag heap. But what I think is going on is that Bowie was not quite so helpless. Okay. And is basically staging a bit of a coup. (laughs) Hey guys, I know among how we all get the her. other, <laughs> right, right, like, like you know, we'll we'll all shamble at her, and eventually, I don't know, she'll fall down <laughs> or something. But yet, like all these old lovers come out of hiding. Although I don't know how the, they're all their coffins. suddenly able to move. Like I don't, yeah, I just don't really understand it. I, I is don't that know. just like it's one of those just just watch <laughs> like just watch it <laughs> I don't yeah i mean th- this is very much a like this is for movie reasons <laughs> right. this is happening and uh but yeah all all of the former lovers are all decayed and mm. gross and they come out of the their coffins and kind of shamble after uh miriam who backs away looking horrified and ends up kind of toppling off of this high railing onto the floor below yeah. and you know it's all busted up and whatnot and then all of the shambling creatures come find yeah. her and one assumes they all kill her question mark, you think? Question mark? yes yeah, because the and... place is all like abandoned and shit later. So, which I don't right. really understand and, how that happened but we... either. But cool, 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 cool. Well, all right. So here's where I I think I can fill okay. in that gap because then the next thing is like uh, that the apartment is being shown uh, to a couple that we don't see. I don't think, and uh, Lieutenant Dan Hidea shows up and is like, uh, <laughs> I hear that. You got some kind of uh, dead problem <laughs> around here or something. We're looking for a little girl. And she's like, ah, look, the owners took off and left. We don't know where they are. There's no report. Like, the, the report is that they both died. But all we know for sure is that lawyers contacted us, says the house was empty yeah. and it's done. And so we're showing this off so that, uh, uh, you know, we can sell the house. He's like, okie dokie, <laughs> and that's it. And then we see a, a sexy couple 
um, this I think is somewhere else. Like this no, isn't the house. Yeah, this is I, yeah, elsewhere. I don't think it was the same place. And it's a sexy couple. One of the the, the women is like, "Oh, Sarah, are you coming?" And then we see that Sarah Saran or Susan Sarandon, who plays Sarah in the movie, um, has survived. Has a little scar on her neck, but she has survived this. You know, I guess because she is a vampire yeah. now that she lived through yeah. this. And we also see that she seems to have Deneuve in a coffin now. Yeah. But is she like alive or dead? Is she probably alive, but like having to live the existence that she bestowed upon her lovers? That is kind yeah. of the impression I have is that like whatever this power is that allows you to be young yeah. forever has transferred to Susan Sarandon and, and she's now, kind of become the new you know, she can Right. She'll go on to, you know, have her own series of lovers who eventually end up yeah. in boxes. She then's got to deal with all that fucking post and packaging. I mean, who's the real victim here? <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. that kind of stuff I got. I just, I wasn't really sure what happened when they, like, I was like, how do they come back? Why is this suddenly, like, now an uprising? Could they have not done that in the last thousand years? No? All right, cool, cool. Yeah. I mean, they just need Bowie I to mean, inspire them. We all them. need he Bowie probably... to inspire us. He was singing them songs. Yeah. He said, let's dance, and they all said, okay. Right. They, <laughs> they're like, look, it's it's a kind of shitty living up here. And he's like, so you say it's it's a god awful small <laughs> affair. Like, Wait, that's a beautiful song. <laughs> I'll play more for you if you help me kill yeah. Miriam. Deal. But we're coming out of the coffin. Oh, this is what we needed. <laughs> we we need the power of song. <laughs> yeah all right cool all right it, it's because of the movie fine that's fine i just wasn't sure if there was something that i'd missed but no just movie fine oh no i don't i don't think that you're missing anything uh, but this is another example of where this movie is very much style over substance style over <laughs> right. exactly I mean, you took the words out of my mouth uh it's it's style yeah, over that's substance. fine and... that's fine because the style is pretty phenomenal yeah. in fairness like if you know i i'm kind of cool on the movie in terms of plot and all that but i hope for listeners who have never seen the hunger like you should yeah. see the hunger it's the a hunger film is... that needs to be like very like it's a visual film that like you're watching it for yeah. the visuals you're not really watching it for this kind of strung together plot like the plot's fine the plot is needed it... to carry it but like you're watching it for the visuals and for the music and for David Bowie and yeah. Claire, uh, Claire Denis, Catherine Denis. And, and if you're on the pot, if you're if you're smoking the reefer uh, while you're watching this movie, that is probably going to be better. Mm -hmm. I can see that. You know, just like get yourself a pint of ice cream, a spoon, a bong the size of your leg. <laughs> And let that guide you into the hunger. Yeah. I just wanted, afterwards, I just wanted to, like, drape around my flat in dark clothing and just be moody and, <laughs> you know, drape myself against the wall and, like, run my hand down my chest kind of thing and just be all dramatic. <laughs> yeah. I put fans outside oh, my right, windows. Cool. Okay. And and put big flowing gauzy I, curtains. I have big flow, very gauzy curtains in my bedroom. I literally yeah. <laughs> people are like, I like the curtains, like they don't keep out any light. And I'm like, I did not buy these curtains for practical use. These curtains are purely for aesthetic. That's it. Like I'm not yeah. no. It's, the thing is, I can sleep through anything. Like I, I can literally. I, the sun doesn't wake me. I have to have such a loud alarm with the Archer theme tune to wake me up um and even then it takes a couple of times i am such a deep sleeper when i'm under um so m the lack of practicalities of my curtain does not bother me um but it does lend itself to be a very cool flowy it goes from white and then it goes like ombre down to dark gray very cool okay mm. i gotcha i think yeah i think maybe i was supposed to be 
an 80s gothic vampire. <sighs> I mean, oh, well. I'm with you. Great. Just for the outfits, if nothing else. <laughs> so that that is the hunger, but let's get back to our subject <laughs> at hand. Polyamorous relationships. Have you ever done anything like that? Have you been like in open relationships or been like the third or... I have been. I've You've been, been the, the third. third. Okay, tell me, tell me. Yeah. Oh. Okay, cat. so. Yeah. Cut down. Uh, Tully yeah. also uh, been involved in a number of of open Slag. relationships. Um, <laughs> no, I was I was involved with someone who, um, she and her husband had a very non sexual mm. relationship, and we had a very pro sexual yeah. relationship. And so that was kind of it, but it was also like um there there was definitely an emotional component for sure. Yeah. Um you know, like it it but I'm like and I was the person who ended up eventually calling it off because that's just it's just not my sure. speed. You know, like I I'm very and and but, and perhaps it 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 took being in this relationship to kind of appreciate it as much mm. as I did. Um, was that I'm very much into? I just want to be with a yeah. Person. You're you're a monogamous, you know, v- very yeah. much so. Um, and it it also didn't help that like she really. One of the things that she enjoyed was the non-monogamous part right. of it. You know, like, um, not so far as it being, like, a cuckold kind of situation Yeah, with like, the guy husband. knew about it. Did he? Yeah. B- absolutely. A hundred percent. But she definitely enjoyed, like, kind of tweaking uh, the sense of jealousy that I would have. <gasps> Ooh, that's not okay. And I was... Yeah, and I was like, I, I'm, I don't enjoy no. this. Like, that's you know, like I'm, I'm awkward about this. Like, I understand the relationship you have with your husband, and the amount of time that we have spent together leads me to believe that your husband is okay with this. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have yeah. left long ago. Like, I didn't have any direct interaction yeah. with him. But, um, but yeah, I was like, I, I don't. Th- this is not no me. i feel like that's I, quite manipulative like, like in any situation like even if she was like your actual girlfriend or wife and then she starts going like oh so this cute guy at work or whatever you know trying to sort of like play into your emotions like that i just feel like that's just quite a manipulative thing to do like in any any sort of scenario like i've like so with the um the sort of scenarios that i've had like you know i'll use the first one um because I think that's probably been the most successful so far. Um, and, like, so the the couple in question, like, they had a very hot and heavy relationship, um, <clears throat> like, several times a day type levels, um, because both of their sex drives are just insanely high. Um, but in, like, recent times, like the last year or so, her sex drive has just kind of disappeared for i think it's because she went on to different medication um she's got she suffers uh from some mental health stuff um and i think that was affecting it and but she'd like tried going into therapy and things and stuff like that and although they would still kind of get down it would be nothing compared to how it used to be and she wouldn't be into it but she'd just be like cool you do you boo like you know apparently like one time um like he was like eating her out while wanking off and she was just on her phone scrolling (laughs) yeah like and it (laughs) and he said part of it it was kind of hot because it was kind of like yeah like that whole kind of like debasement type thing but equally it's kind of like but he's he's such a giver like he loves to give pleasure so it was it was more of like this is actually just very disheartening because my pleasure comes from your pleasure um so they were like trying out different things and you know they decided like maybe that he should like you know there's they're so in love and they are such a wonderful couple and the way that he talks about her oh my gosh like it's the sweetest thing um but like you know he he does have a, a very high sex drive and it's just not being met so you know that's that situation but like you know I, I said to him like look 
your partner, I try not to name names or anything, your partner, um, she's she's my priority in this because I have nothing to lose here. Um, you're getting your end away. And she has put in so much trust in you and I. And, you know, she is having to do like this really amazing thing for you. You know, I need to know that she is 100% okay with everything. Because as soon as I find out that she isn't, this is... I'm dead in this, you know, like it's not like, and he's a very, very honest person. He is just one of the nicest guys. Like he is such a genuine, lovely down to earth guy. Um, and like, he tells me everything about what they've been discussing and they have like a check-in every evening. And there's certain things like we don't do Sundays because that's their day. Cause she works all the time as a chef and, um, you know, like he won't, be able to come over unless she's out of the house kind of thing so she's not like sat at home thinking about her bloke you know with somebody else kind of thing um but because she's a chef mm-hmm. she works a lot of nights so that's fine um and stuff like that but like you know he'll tell me about like how she's feeling and what they've been chatting about and stuff and like you know that and, and then like he'll tell her about the things that we chat about and like you know, and not anything like any of my personal shit, but just, you know, like, hey, like, you know, this was going on and this was kind of cool. And like, you know, and she's just like the loveliest person. Like, I've not met her or anything, but from what he tells me and things like, you know, um, she's really sweet. And, you know, and but it's that communication and like no one's there's no toxicity in it at all. Like no one's like trying to manipulate the other one or get anything from the other excuse me, other one other than what's been discussed and what's been like agreed upon. And me and him are like really good mates now. Like, um, it's so funny because we can like bang like anything, right? Fucking hot and heavy, all the rest of it. And then we'll come into the kitchen and like, and I'll be like, oh, so like, um, did you like watch that movie with Sophie that I, oh shit, I just said, <laughs> did you watch that movie like, um, you know, with, with your girlfriend like that I recommended and stuff? And he's like, oh yeah, no, she loved it. Blah, blah, blah. And like, we'll high five and stuff. And it's just like, we're mates, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's like a very separate thing, like the sex and the friendship. But it's just quite funny how like we, I can literally like be like giving him all kinds of deep throat one minute and then like high five him because they're now engaged, you know, like, oh, fucking hey, buddy. Like, that's so awesome. Give me, man, give me a hug. You know, like I've just been like, you've just been balls deep in me five minutes ago, but let's high five on your engagement, <laughs> you know, but like if anything, yeah. anything came up like that, that situation that you had where like he was trying to make me jealous or try and get something from me by manipulating my emotions or whatever. Like that just to me is such a huge red flag. Like I would never, I would just be like, yeah, I don't know what shit you've got going on, mate, but I'm not a part of that because that is not a healthy way to be in a, in a situation that requires so much trust and honesty and communication from everybody involved. You know, like it's just, nah, it's just, it's just not a good way to be in that. Like it's such a delicate setup. Do you know what I mean? It's a very delicate ecosystem. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And especially in a situation where I was very upfront with the idea or, you know, in saying like, this is a very different kind of situation for me and not something I'm entirely comfortable yeah. with. And so like, I'm going to have to kind of baby step. Like, again, I understand the the setup and so forth, but it just wasn't ultimately like like i knew it wasn't gonna be for me before i i think before that aspect of it kind of reared yeah. its head but it but that was definitely a like oh okay we're this is definitely not gonna yeah be yeah big red flag huh yeah for sure, yeah, for sure. but also though this e m situation thing has led me to drum roll Yes. My first proper lesbian experience. Oh, thank congratulations. You, thank you. So for those who don't know, I... What's if you don't know? Come on, I've just been drooling over Megan Fox for fucking ever. Um, <laughs> uh, I am pansexual. So for those who don't know what that means, that means I am pretty much open to everyone. Like, it doesn't matter about your gender. What is hot is hot to me. Um, you know, I don't ma- fancy every person. I don't think every person in the world is hot, but that's because I just don't think you're hot. That's nothing to do with how you identify or what's between your legs. Um, so yeah. Um, anyways, but I have through circumstances and being in two very long-term monogamous 
heterosexual relationships back to back I've never really had a lot of opportunity to be gay <laughs> like in the mm-hmm. in the in the practical sense um but anyways yeah so I met this girl who is engaged <laughs> to this guy um again it's all very like he knows and it's all fine and yeah I um got my end away a little bit um unfortunately I haven't seen her since not because of anything but she's just not been very well and I've been really busy but we're meeting up again in a few weeks so that'd be nice um but yeah and like and right not to be graphic I don't think people care about this point yeah too late now now. um so wait hang on run by the bases with me because I want to make sure I get this right what's first base first base is yeah kissing kissing with tongues right second base is like fingers and hand jobs I always thought second base was boobs, third base was uh was vaginal fingering. No, and then the home run was I thought it sex. was well, I mean I'm kind of man's but it's American terminology, but I thought it was kissing with tongues, second base was fingering or hand jobs, third base was oral, and fourth base was home run. Sex. I look, I just learned that Netflix and Chill did not mean just watching <laughs> movies like three days ago. Oh, I You're no so idea. So fucking cute. No idea. I look, to be honest, um, Netflix and chill to me does just mean that because, like, sorry, but are we watching the show or having sex? I can't do both. I need to fucking follow this plot line. Like, yeah, we can right, have sex right. and then it, watch Netflix. Like, That's fine. Or the other way around, whichever way. But I'm not fucking. Like if we're watching something, we're watching it start to end. Uh huh. It's it's just yeah, it's just my thing. Yeah, no, right? I'm, I'm with you. When when somebody was like, "Oh no, Netflix and chill means fucking," I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like yeah, Netflix and chill does mean that. It's like it's like that thing of like, "Oh hey, let's put on a movie and not watch it." No, I want to watch it. I want to fucking yeah. watch the movie. Yeah. Then we can fuck. That's fine. I, yeah. I mean that that's been my curse my entire life though is like if we're watching a movie that I really like I'm like how about we either stop the yeah. movie and fuck or we watch the, or we finish the yeah. movie then fuck I'm the same but let's not fuck while because I'm gonna get Which distracted is. exactly I'm gonna be there like mid blowjob and they'll be like and I'll just suddenly show you up and I'm like oh man no no watch this bit it's well cool yeah right right and be like what and I'll be like no 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 fucking right okay we're gonna have to rewind it now because you didn't get the context oh it's just... <laughs> Did you? Did you? <laughs> you yeah. Or I'll be like, you know, like mid sex, and I'll be like, wait, wait, wait. Did you hear that joke? You didn't. Okay, we're rewinding it because that was really fucking funny. Just hold, wait, wait, hold, wait. Oh yeah. fuck, I've gone far too back. Okay, right. Let's just. Uh, like, it's, I'm sorry, just not. Like, it's just no, no. Either fuck me or watch right, a movie. Well, <laughs> but let's. Uh, we're we're getting way oh, off yeah, topic my, here. Let's, let's get listen. back to you and your your that's right. uh, same sex yeah. encounter. So, anyways. I got up to a finger there. So if we couldn't agree on a pace. Right. Okay. Anyways, I made a come twice. It's the first fucking time. And it is very like women are tricky. You know, they, mm-hmm. I, I knew that before going in, <laughs> so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, I made a come twice. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Well done. And one of them was internally, which is a lot harder than the clitoris right nice. i was really proud of myself yeah yeah yeah. no i yeah one of, it it yeah absolutely like uh, i tell whenever asked and you know in a, in an inappropriate <laughs> environment in which to share this with the internet uh <laughs> right uh not not in my classroom <laughs> oh, no. but yeah i uh, uh but i'm always like hey don't no matter what you're doing even if you're doing you know straight up finger jabs you know penis to vagina oh. penetration don't forget the no, clips yeah, yeah. you stay right? focused yeah don't forget the hot button but yeah right, like, right yeah right. and I'd, I'd like <laughs> so funny because <laughs> i'm like right okay just gotta remember what that guy did that time like you know like because <laughs> like i'd never yeah. done it before and like doing it yourself is very d- different and also as well i can never get the angle right internally for myself so i'm like pure clitoral stimulation when i'm just using my fingers kind of thing so like mm. Mm. um so i'm just like i'm trying to like channel like 
previous times where like I'd had some good fingering from guys and I'm like right okay there's that come to me fucking gesture and that's like you know anyway whatever the fuck I did mm-hmm. it worked so woo! Um, well done. yeah I was well done. proper chuffed with myself well welcome to the the wonderful and sometimes uh intricate <laughs> world of uh making yeah, other women come but yeah it turns out turns out women are pretty good at it so don't know what men are doing yeah <laughs> Right, look, wasting, wasting time, time. Most of the time. Yeah. Oh my god, do you want to hear a story about fucking wasting time? Or wasting time Please. fucking. So you know how I mentioned I had someone over last night? Uh, right. I did, so yes. I uh, right. I would message this guy, I matched with him on an app, <clears throat> and um and we I was like feeling a little bit frustrated because this other guy had like said that him and his wife were going to slow things down which is again totally respectful but i was very looking forward to our date on tuesday but whatever it's fine that's basically all in the field but um they i was very very frustrated so i was just like right i want to find someone to bang after this movie that i'm going to tonight so i i started messaging this guy and all good lots of good vibes and like you know lots of teasing talk and like you know building anticipation and whatnot and he's all like yeah like um I've got really high sex drive and like I've been told this and that and whatever and um and okay all right look I I'm gonna just admit I'm a size queen okay like I Mm -hmm. need a certain caliber of dick right not mm-hmm. because of anything to do with me in terms of, I mean I'm, I've been told I'm very compact but like I just yeah I just like a something to work with all right and that's not to say that like I've only been with big guys like there are some perfectly absolutely decent smaller guys but I've just realized in recent in recent times that I like a bigger day like not massive but like around seven inches is good anyway right mm-hmm. so okay. <clears throat> anyways I'm like trying to test the waters on my like, art oh, and I'm saying like because I really like to deep throat I just like want to know like you know what am I working with here trying to like you know be gentle about it and then he turns around and he says like oh don't worry you've got nothing to work like worry about and I'm like gravy baby and then he's all like yeah like I'm like and reload and all this because he's all about edging himself and stuff in anticipation I'm like well don't do it too much I don't need to bl- need to blow your load within like a minute kind of thing and he was just like don't worry mm-hmm. like even if that does happen I can reload real fast and all this shit right so I'm like great great awesome this all sounds great so anyways he comes over mine late last night good looking guy matches his photo so that's <laughs> that's a start um and <laughs> uh comes in great kisser doing all like making all the right moves and everything and then whips whips it out and he is such a fucking liar <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he's no. such a fucking liar but i'm like okay it's not like a, it's not like a micro dick it's fine it's just not as big as i had been led to believe and i'm like that's fine though whatever and like i start going to town on it and literally 30 seconds sprays everywhere oh no yeah. so i'm like so how quick was the reload was he was he for real on that no reload oh there no, no reload. and on top of that so he got it all over my tits right <clears throat> not to be graphic but uh-huh. so i go and clean up and i come back and he's just like led on his bed or led on my bed sorry and he just starts like he's got his boxes back on he's like on his phone and i'm like all right so i get like on the bed next to him and he just starts chatting to me and i'm just like are you going to finish what you started kind of thing like because he was like he'd gone down on me like a little bit but like I mean the train had left the station but it had definitely not reached its destination you know what I mean right yeah, yeah, I, get yeah it. I feel like I was being clear <laughs> hey we've talked about this a number of times I'm like you blow a load that's great yeah it, it it's yeah. time to get to work and he was just like oh yeah absolutely like like why do I need to ask though and then in fairness, he did do a great job of going down. Like he did. Like, and it's kind of one of those things where I think like he probably knows that he's not the biggest guy in the world. And so he's really kind of like made sure he's good at other stuff. But like mm-hmm. still no sex. And like I'm like, I don't know, it's weird because with I think it's because with girls, 
in my very limited experience, I'm, I know not to expect that, if that makes sense. Like, so like mm-hmm. in that traditional sense. So it's kind of like, you kind of know what you're going in for. Whereas with guys, I'm kind of like, I get to a point and I'm like, I need some deep digging, you know? So mm-hmm. I'm like yeah, yeah. waiting for his reload and it just doesn't happen. And I'm trying and like, it's just not happening. And in the end, I was like, I'm going to go get some water. And, <laughs> and then we like, and he was on about staying over before and like, we were going to have some morning sex and whatever. And like, go grab a coffee. Cause I didn't really have anything to do like heavily today. Like I had someone coming over this afternoon, but like the morning I was relatively free. And then I was just like, are you going to stay? And he's like, yeah, I think I'm probably just going to go home. And I was like, yeah, probably for the best. <laughs> Probably. Probably. he's like yeah it wasn't that far he's just like but you know and then he messaged me and he was just like oh thanks for a great time and he was like um oh next time like um you know i like i i realized like i owe you some actual sex and i was just like no you're cool like <laughs> it was just like such bad manners you know yeah yeah i was just like uh, that's right like Sorry. i did have an orgasm like it was fine it was just like why tell me all of this stuff and amp yourself up if you cannot deliver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's under promise over deliver, man. That's customer right? service at, at a bare minimum. It's like, ah, eh, you know, I, I you, you, if you want to say like, oh, I haven't had a lot of complaints. Great, that's that's fine. You're not you're not overselling anything. Like, yeah, but. But like going stuff yeah, like, well. oh, you'll definitely like be. Well, he said like, oh, you you won't be disappointed. Well, turns out, <laughs> turns out I was. Um, it was fine. Like it was fine. It wasn't like the worst sexual experience I'd ever had. But it was just kind of very much this overpromise, under under delivered. Like the way he was going on, he yeah. was like he was going to rock my world, and like it was going to be like an all nighter and stuff. Because he, he was, I was like, because I'm not going to get home till like eleven thirty. Is that too late? It's like, no, nah, baby, we got all night kind of thing, you know, and all of this. And I was like, turns out all night for him was about thirty seconds. So, Ugh, cool. yeah, not great, no, not great. He was only twenty five, bless him. Maybe he just needs a bit more experience. I, yeah you know it's that's but unfortunate then I've been the, last year i was fucking a 24 year old and he had great stamina i mean he he was a psychopath but like you know he had great stamina <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> when some you lose some <laughs> yeah it's you know part part of it is uh, like it's individual mm-hmm. for sure um but also it's some of it is just what? manners okay. you know if like, he had, if he had come all over my tits right and been like oh my gosh like okay you sit right there you lie back do not worry about this that would have been mm-hmm. I'd have been like all right cool I mean let me go clean up first but sure but like the fact that I went clean up and I came in and he's just like making himself at home in my bed like with his like his socks on and fucking on his phone and shit and I'm just like uh huh okay what do you think is happening here if you think we're done well you can forget that you know like yeah saddle up cowboy <sighs> yeah that's yeah either immaturity or just bad form Both. and either way he you're yeah, right he he should he should, he know, should better. know better i'm tempted to message him like, uh, by the way on your next hookup do not do that <laughs> But I'm also like, we well, you know what I'm. I was gonna say I'm not his mother. <laughs> I don't think his mother's telling him that either. <laughs> but also, but... Yeah, be sure that <laughs> you're like, if you happen to blow your low too early. Do you know what? Son. If I had a boy, I'd be telling him that shit. Like I'd be like, uh, at I mean, a certain age, like sure, five or anything. But like, if you know, when he started, like you know, actually, like when I know that he's like seeing someone regularly, or whatever. I'd be like, by the way do not do this when you watch talk to me yeah the mum in that goals and you'll know what i mean like when you see mm-hmm. it she okay. is fucking great. i i think you have to use coded language you know you have to you have to say things like remember you you are there with a partner make sure that you are keeping that at front of yeah. mind and that it is not all it about a you balance Mm-hmm. It's a delicate operation. Like you don't want to, it, it and and it's dicey because you don't want to, you don't want to go too far in either direction. Like you don't want to be a complete like 
you don't want to uh, not. Oh fuck. yeah, no, exactly. Like last night, right? You know, I mean, that's yeah. a problem too. But you definitely want to make sure that if you do fuck and things get out of hand, then or you know, well in <laughs> hand, whichever, then you know, you just yeah, it's, it, it's the same advice I give all the time. Just make sure that you are you are taking care of yeah. your partner. Or just you know, some and, and making in place. sure that like before... some mind fucking distractions, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or like if you know that, then like and, you know, maybe do something else for a bit and then go. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, right. <laughs> it, like, look, everybody makes mistakes. There are always unfortunate circumstances. Of but you got to be willing to own up to it. And like you can do a, hey, next time will be better. But you've just got to make sure that the next time will be better comes after an, uh, they have already. Yeah. Orgasmed. And also make sure that next time is definitely better. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, don't again, sure. don't make promises you can't keep. You know, mm-hmm. like it's just mm-hmm. like that. Just manage my expectations. That's all I ask. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, don't go in like, "Hey, I've, I'm, you know, I've got this big hammer." I'm exactly, swinging. like you were in for a time of your life, because it's like, honey, I'm thirty-five, that- and I've probably had a lot more sex than you. It's going to take a lot to impress me. It like beyond, like if you're going to come in with that energy, then you need to provide that energy because, like, I have ten more years of experience on you at least, and. This is not my first radio. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, in my my experience and time here on, on this uh, this world we call <laughs> Earth, um, I am very into uh, let it be a surprise. How yeah, pleasant, yeah. right? Like when you're talking, especially when you're talking about size, like just don't oversell. Just like be like, if you, again... If you want to go with the, hey, I haven't had a lot of complaints, that's fine. Don't start talking a big game and then show up with, you know, the pea <laughs> shooter. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, there is no better reaction in the world than, I didn't realize we were talking about this. Yeah. You know, like, the, th- this is an unexpected and yeah. pleasant surprise. That yeah, is what you Yeah, want. definitely. No, 100%. Again, just the... The level of expectations, if you're going to set them, set them low. And then it's, oh, gravy. This is great. You know, For sure. Is, know, the, the one I always go with, I'm like, look, I'm I'm over 6'2", and I am proportional. Right. Yeah. You don't have to get any more. Yeah. You, like, yeah, uh, any more elaborate that's than That's fine. That. I don't need exact measure. Do you know what? Actually, fuck. One time, I kind of was like indicating like hey so you know what are we packing here <clears throat> and the guy sent me not only a dick pic but a dick pic with a measuring tape mm-hmm. i was like well I'll, i've got I've my done answer <laughs> you've done that uh-huh have uh-huh. you For sure. is this a thing i just thought yeah. this was a guy being i mean it didn't put me off because it was great it but was, like n- n- no but it was it was with somebody that uh that asked the question of like how long are you talking and uh and i said well i you know because and it wasn't the first dick pic so like she had seen the dick before she just hadn't seen the measuring (laughs) stick beside it and uh so she was like well i mean it looks fine but what are we talking about and so i said Uh, okay that's no that's she she was basically asking me to do that though because she's like okay well this is great but what what are we measuring against but like but this right. guy was just, I was just kind of, I wasn't even saying, hey, how big is your dick? I was just, I was kind of like, oh, hey, so, you know, like, you know, my kind of usual line of like, so I really like to deep throat, like, do you think I can handle you kind of thing? You know, like, gussying them up a little bit. Because um, I feel like it's a nice way of broaching that kind of thing, you know? And it's a yeah, good promise it, of like, oh, hey, she's going to, you know, she's going to deep throat. Right. And I would much rather get, any, like I, I'm a big fan of it's better to know than not to yeah. know. And so, like, if that is something that's going to be a mm. concern, let's get just that. Wanna, yeah, out like of I don't want to. Yeah, early. exactly. But then he just literally immediately comes in with this dick pic. So first off, like, 
I mean, unless he, he may well just have had that on his phone. But <laughs> if he hasn't, he's had to oh, get sure. himself hard <laughs> and then take a picture of it with the next to a measuring tape. Um, which would be fair. Like, if, if that isn't just something he has on his phone, fair play to the effort. Um, but, like, it was just, like, it made me laugh so much because I'd have just been happily, you could have just told me. You know, like, mm -hmm. it, I didn't, like, plus I didn't need the dick pic. I, I didn't need it with a measuring tape. You could have just given me a number and that would have been fine. You know, I'd have believed you, but you know, all good. Thanks for the evidence. Fucking exhibit A right here, you know? I, I thought, when I did it, I thought it was kind yeah. of fun. I mean, that's probably, I mean, it made me laugh. That's possibly what he was going for. Yeah. But. You know, it was like, oh, okay, well, here's an actual, like, it, like an actual wooden ruler. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I thought it was funny to have. Well, I was what I was disappointed in with this photo is that you know, on measuring tapes where they have the little hook so you can like hook it around, like that he didn't put mm -hmm. that on the end of his dick because that would have really cracked me up. Yeah, That's he didn't do good. that. He missed an opportunity, yeah. honestly. But maybe he was just yeah. worried about like uh, hurting himself because those fuckers are sharp. Um, <laughs> speaking of hooking up, should, oh should we... yeah, we still have tin Tinder is the flesh, don't we? Tinder is the flesh, where we we rate, review, recommend yep. based on three Tinder profiles that you have called from what can only be dozens of profiles <sighs> that are available on Tinder. Now. Yeah, dozens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I look. I don't know. I'm. I, I'm. I'm not using the Tinder yet. 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 I'm just going on here. Okay. Cool. So. Oh God. Yeah. That's right. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> All right. So first off, we have Andy, and he says, "Hey, I'm Andy." I can do 60 press-ups and have never in history been beaten at anything by a girl. Hit me up. Oof. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Is it, it, it like at toxic masculinity? Is that where you can find yeah. this guy? Do you? Yeah. Do you want to so, hear the next right. one? Mm, yes please mm. so bear, bear, the, bear Andy in mind and then we have Matthew in my day he's 38 by the way in my day guys had to make an effort we were not allowed into bars or nightclubs wearing t-shirts and trainers like today's generation Z then go on then on to daytime wear it seems to have gone full circle my father wore socks and sandals but today the kids wear socks and quote-unquote sliders like there's any difference laughing emoji hopefully it will all pass like the sleeve tats and man buns if you remember those simply looking for a tidy girl that's not had any threesomes yep guess i'm old-fashioned laughing emoji wait you can't ever have had nope, a threesome not. that's not had any threesomes a tidy uh, man, girl 38 going on the fuck does that even mean? Right, then we have Carl. Okay. And I I have read this a couple of times and I don't know whether he's joking or not. Because there okay. are some profiles that are very deadpan, but it's kind of like <laughs> you're clearly joking, right? Like clearly this is just, you know, you having a dry sense of humor. But I just, <sighs> it's the ending that kind of like makes me question whether he uh, this could be genuine. I have 26 kids and I expect anyone who wants to date me to love them. And if we are dating, you need to pony up and pay the babysitting costs as I'm not dating no broke people. Okay. That is the lovely Carl. That's all. Oh, yeah, it? that's it. And also as well, his profile, he does not look like he has a sense of humor. Mm, I mm, I'm still gonna say this is a joke because 26 kids is, is a lot outside of. I'm gonna send you. Like, I'm gonna it, send you it because look, just look at his face though. Because okay. this is a guy who just doesn't seem to have a sense of humor. All right, all right. Let's see. Oof. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. 
like that does not say hey jokes all right yeah i i don't disagree but i think mm, i i think that it's still a joke i think that's a bad picture to go on that profile but i i still think the i'm not gonna date no broke people is a gag yeah i because the little emoji I next to it so. thing or the attempt at an emoji it, right right that's okay it. so it's not like a winking face or like a laughing emoji or anything it's like a stern looking emoji i i yeah like but i again i think he's just all in on yeah, the bit you reckon um, all right so so i'm gonna say based on what mm-hmm. we've heard so far he is top of the list <laughs> in a bad it's not bunch. great is it i just kind of i was quite proud of these three yeah the, like nobody here deserves a no. response He's um, to pay the babysitting costs because i'm not the, yeah you yeah, pay the babysitting yeah, yeah, yeah. costs so, for my kids but, right right like i'm not the one who had 26 <laughs> kids like wrap it up that's if that's the you, truth though. Like, right. yeah. Like, honestly, just don't buy groceries for a while. <laughs> and the herd will thin, <laughs> I assure you. Like, the, the real alpha males are going to rise to the Darwin, top. It's fucking Darwin, man. It is best. Right. A couple of them are going to yeah, get hit. Right. Um, and, and you know who? The fat yeah, ones and the weak definitely. ones. Definitely. So. Mm. So. All right. All right. So, Carl but it does is sound top like of the he list. Might have money. In, <laughs> well i mean i don't know because he's <sighs> probably well it depends on the situation because he could maybe be getting help like child support but he also might have be having to pay child support and it, right and it it could also be that none of these kids it could are all, yeah i mean there yeah there is that too so um so then you just got someone who's just trying to get a free ride literally <laughs> i but i see i think this is bait for like th- this is engagement bait of like you know there is no way i'm gonna i'm gonna go have these on your babysitter do you really have 26 kids right. that kind of thing like like i think in his mind what he's thinking is i'm gonna be kind of outrageous in the profile to try to get some response. i just i just don't know why you would swipe right on that in any respects I, it's, I'm with you. I think it's a it's bad terrible. profile. But, but I, well, think, call us up. I you think need this our help. is where we, right? This is where we step in yeah, as right. profile yeah. assistants, and we're like, "You're, you're fucking, fucking this, this up. up from end to end." Yeah, it's it's a bad picture. It's a bad name. <laughs> it's a bad age. Everything about this is bad. Oh. <laughs> we're we're changing your name. We're gonna take your your age down yeah. a year. Just so you're in early thirties, um, yeah, it's it doesn't matter. Just we're we're gonna shave a year off to make it even slightly more palatable. <laughs> it's just yeah, all bad. It this is, is all, just a, a shitty, shitty, terrible. shitty call. Yeah, this is I bad. Hope you find someone. But still, still, still better, better than, than anything else that you yeah. brought. So my, I think this goes in reverse okay. order. I think my number two bad is the socks and sliders guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's nah. <laughs> he's my least because at least the other guy can do sixty press I mean, <laughs> what's this guy bringing to the table? Chauvinism and misogyny and judgment on other men. Whereas this guy's like, hey, I can do sixty press ups. Yeah, but then he's. But I've never let a woman beat me at anything. I've never in history been beaten at anything by a girl. Right. That's. It's not. Speaking of misogyny, uh, it's not great. Hit me up. Uh, no. But all right, so, but old but old dog. Gramps. Uh, in the oh, photo, okay, it's a well, brown Labrador. Something. He is just adorable. All right, he is well, a dog. If you get to play I mean, with the dog. Oh, I'll, I'll steal the dog. Right. Yeah, all right. Steal yeah. the dog. I'll Set up a date. Steal in. the dog. I will just pretend to be some meek little girly girl and like, you know, pump up his ego, and then I'll get like some sort of plan, like some sort of infiltration. The, the other guy does. 
<laughs> he does remind me of when um Dana Carvey on Saturday Night Live would do the back in my day old. Oh, man the, bit. the other the one you like? Well, like in quotes, <laughs> like it, I don't, know, I don't like, like him. him. Uh, but in my day, <laughs> you know, guys like, had to make an the, effort. Yeah, my yeah, day, yeah, you're yeah, thirty-eight, yeah. I mean, mate. Your day is my day. Right. This is. It's the same it's, day. It's, Your day like is today's today. Generation Z, no, bro. Like you weren't like you weren't like you were allowed in. You could wear t-shirts and trainers. Oh, actually, no, could you? Right. Like when did when was that not okay? I mean, I know that I come from a I different think, like, country, but literally you no know, if you were a guy you could you couldn't wear trainers if you were a girl which is so fucking dumb but it was kind of like guys generally only have trainers so i think they got a pass because they only yeah. had trainers ever <laughs> and so like yeah like you would like to wear trainers and like whatever but like as long as i think it was like as long as you looked put together you were fine you weren't allowed in if you were wearing like tracksuit bottoms and like that like you know like yeah. joggers or whatever like the kappa popper things but you could wear like you can wear jeans some smart trainers and like a smart t-shirt that's fine so i don't know what the fuck he's talking about I... all right here's what we're dealing with here i've been thinking about this for a second right. i think i got it this isn't about fashion this is about him looking down the barrel of Ford. Mm-hmm. And realizing that he is no longer the young guy at yes. the club. Although his photo and has so waffles the... in it. Waffles with, I think, strawberries and cream. He's not eating it, though, so fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that this is less about him criticizing. I mean, on the surface, it's him criticizing the way that people look in a club. It's him saying, I... I don't like the fact that I'm getting older and now when I go to a club, I look weird because I'm too old to be yeah. in a club. And this is him, this is, you know, him complaining about today, you know, right. It, it's just, he is bemoaning. Th- this is a dirge. This is a, 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 a eulogy to he's his mis- self projecting, isn't he? He's projecting. The, this is total projection. It doesn't mean that he's a good pick, but also I like he needs he needs better help. I just is what he needs. for me. He needs... I'm just like hopefully it'll all pass like the sleeve tats and man. The sleeve tats and man buns are still definitely a thing, and it's hot. And yeah. also, well, maybe not the man buns so much, but definitely sleeve man buns but are not hot. Yeah. Although you can get some man buns that are hot if it comes attached if they're tidy, like neat and done like as a proper style and not like just a scrunched up fucking mess on your head and then like with a nicely like trimmed beard like a good like nice shape to it and stuff and lots of tattoos and topless that's when they look good um (laughs) (laughs) and then also simply looking for a tidy girl what i still don't know what that is what the fuck is a tidy girl Tidy is weird, and also the the weird thing about like can never have been in a like, threesome. Well, you don't want her to have sexual experience, right? You don't like, want her to... yeah. Are you looking for someone that d- don't know yeah. no better? Are you looking for so, like what? It, could she not have any sexual partners either? Because I really don't understand why it makes a difference to you if she's had a threesome because it's still all the same number of people she's had sex with. But the, yeah, the, but the, this is all about the insecurity yeah. again. This guy's just a big about, fool whether of it's in the fucking cry baby yeah he needs he needs therapy he does he also needs to eat his waffle. so all right so i i agree with you this guy's sunk to the bottom of my, <laughs> my list because he needs therapy so the number two then is gonna be misogyny yeah guy. also as well he and... says hit me up so i'm gonna take that literally oh you think he likes just a, a punch well in the chops? i'm just gonna give it to him whether he likes it or not it would be good, he I said, think. Hit me up. I'll be like, well, you said it. But this could also be thinly disguised. Like, I actually like it when women challenge me. Yeah. You know, that he's like, I'm I'm going to say this thing, but really what I'm saying also, is, isn't I impressive. want. Yeah. Like, all right, maybe not now, but, you know, yeah. <clears throat> 10 years ago. 
<laughs> I could have definitely done more mm. than 60 press ups and full press ups, not just girl press ups, which I hate that phrase. Like the ones where you're on your knees. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe that's what they call girl press ups. <laughs> For that matter, they should be called girl no, press ups. <laughs> um <laughs> uh but yeah i could do more than 60 i was really do you know what at one point i was such a fucking gym bunny <sighs> i do not have time for that shit now um but yeah mm. i reckon yes all right so we go with carl and his 26 kids as number one yeah 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 uh, because i think that it, it's it's gross. It's a terrible uh, profile. But we think but he's it's kidding. The best. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, oh, for All sure. Right. And then we're going for Andy. Hit me up, misogynist. At the prospect of possibly being able to yeah. give him a good smack around. And right. he is a dog. I think that's kind of what it is. And he is a dog. Yeah. And he is so a dog. Yeah. Uh, and then. Points. Yeah. And and then the guy who's just in dire dire need of some yeah. therapy. I think he's probably got mummy issues That's, as well. He, yeah, there's a lot there's going a lot on there. there. Like, you know, and and the thing is, if you did go out with this guy, there would be far less fucking and far more him talking about how, all of his views. Yeah. Oh my god, he would be such a mansplainer. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> he's got a lot to say. He's got a lot of opinions, and none, none of them. Are any good. Not one. Not one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah he's definitely the worst like the actual he's just the worst just yeah the the, oh this is just a, like i said this is a is. bad bunch this whole crop this uh i mean it's what happens when we take a summer off and come back <laughs> we got just oh, utter garbage. garbage to yeah. deal with it's yeah um oh all God, right well some of the others i've got uh, lined again, up fucking hell uh, all right folks look we this is a bonus size episode yeah. no doubt about it thank you for sticking with us uh, but <laughs> yes uh but i think you you will have learned along the way you will have uh, learned more about yourself the and us sports and being able to uh pick your time right. when it comes to discussing right. dick size uh is uh uh you know uh, a a relationship not limited to two people right for you i think we've given you some pros yeah. and cons it works for some people and... i personally for the record i could not be on the other end of it i can't do that i am i'll admit way too insecure <laughs> for that shit <laughs> and i don't like to share like in that way but i'm quite happy with nothing to lose on the other side <laughs> 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 and i uh as usual have nothing yeah. to lose um all right <laughs> so uh next month we'll talk about some other stuff <laughs> with a different movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that much we can guarantee <laughs> yeah <laughs> i bet you guys are all excited for that <laughs> uh uh-huh. so look look forward to that if you want to watch the the stuff early <laughs> then basically watch every film <laughs> so it's got like sex or romance or something in it uh, Maybe. just all of them just watch all of them you never know we could take <laughs> we a swerve uh-huh ne- next month the guns of never own <laughs> <laughs> starring david oh. niven and a british person as a german <laughs> <laughs> and our topic will be toast. <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's a nightmare Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you're gonna laugh when you want to talk to me and that scene comes up you're just gonna start laughing after this conversation <laughs> i i'm looking forward to it I, I'm yeah, don't want tomorrow, let but, me know what you think uh, all right well uh thanks for listening everybody uh where, where can people find more out of oh, either yeah Kate? so we've actually in my other show we've had a bit of a delay because my co-host internet has been down um oh. because they decided to go on a cruise instead of paying the bill 
<laughs> no. Oh, well, <laughs> it was, we make choices. <laughs> no, it was, just, it was an accident. Um, but like, yeah, anyway, so they've been offline for a little bit, but they're getting it all sorted and it's all fine. Um, but uh, so we've had to take a little bit of a breather. And then I was abroad. Um, and then I've just come back and we're recording tomorrow. Um, so that'll be back. And that is Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds. Um, and it's just a horror and dark genre type movies podcasts um and it's just light-hearted bants and just kind of similar energy to this show <laughs> just i can never take anything too seriously honestly um and that can be found on like all your usual places spotify apple whatever and we have like podcast page uh, like facebook pages and such so check us out yeah and uh it, it's not the most recent episode it's like maybe two back but uh, a good one on uh, Gonji. Oh, and that was Asylum. fucking great. And do you know what else? I actually just managed to, through sources and means that I will not specify, managed to end up getting mm -hmm. a copy of um, Record of Sweet Murder, which was original choice for that for that episode. Um, but we just could not find it for love nor money, either of us. So we had to do a last yeah, minute yeah, yeah. switch out. Um, but yeah, you know, Gonji and Haunted Asylum, that was fucking, that was a great film. Yeah. It, oh, it's spooky proper, yeah, yeah yeah it's one proper got me but yeah it, one of those that's done yeah. right you know very uh very very yeah, seldom definitely up there for do you get a, a good one of those yeah yeah um all right and if, if you were listening to this then obviously uh this is more of the dark parade there will be more coming soon um although probably not this long <laughs> and probably not as much discussion of of dicks Maybe. but uh look that's conjecture i can't can. promise I'm not, nor should you no uh the next one could be all dicks well as we established at the beginning <laughs> you love the d so but, you know i've i've had one most of my life <laughs> you're pretty fond of it i hear i yeah yeah i I've, I've enjoyed its company over time <laughs> it's always that one you need uh so yeah, it's like, have I enjoyed it so much there has been chafing? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe that's happened. Yeah, that's all right. We've all been there. Well, not uh, yours specifically. Um, <laughs> everyone has dealt with my chafe penis at one time or another. No one no one has been no saved been from that. Saved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was very scathed. <laughs> oh, fuck it up. <laughs> All right, that's enough. All right, we'll see everybody in a <laughs> See you later, everyone. Bye.